Hello, ladies and gents. I'm Sunny Las Vegas. I'm an entrepreneur, artist, a man with a few titles, some that I like to claim, some that I don't admit, depending who it is that I'm talking to in secrecy. And secrecy is one of the key words I want to bring up later on in the show with this man right here, this creative mind. Looking into your past, which we all like to do is be nosy, TJ. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. Let me let you introduce yourself to those who are here, those who will see this later on in the future, and what they can expect by giving you a chance to follow. Okay. Uh, my name is TJ Lovelady. Uh, I've been on YouTube for quite a while now, uh, apparently 12 years. <laughs> I didn't know how long it's, yeah. been. It's, it's been a long time. Um, you know, I make a, my content is mostly about, I want to say entrepreneurship. It's not necessarily all about like reselling or about, um, you know, Instagram or YouTube or anything like that. It's, it's all about entrepreneurship. So I always try to look for different ways to, to, you know, build your brand and, you know, build your income and stuff like that. Um, a lot of, I have two channels. I got TJ Love Lady and I got Pallet Jacking. On Pallet Jacking channel, we do we focus more on reselling. It's me and my sister. And then on my TJ Lovely channel, it's pretty much a hodgepodge, which is is not the best thing for YouTube, I found. <laughs> but uh I, I like making pallet jacking. What is pallet jacking? Because so, you know what it is. Yeah. And what so, I discovered last night, I I I know what it is because I was looking at your Facebook page. Yeah. Well, so that name, okay. Let me let me tell you where, where it started. It started from YouTube. So there's a guy, um, his name is Random Frank P. So he's got like, I don't know, maybe two million subscribers now at this point. But he was buying these pallets of merchandise. So he would buy like electronics and stuff like that. And he was going to, he was paying like $200 for these pallets. And he would get like $2,000 worth of stuff on them. And I told my sister when I was like, hey, we need to go look at this guy's video. And she looked at it and she called me. And uh, me and her are like the same person. We, we, we think like a light. And uh, she said, uh, well, we need to go get one of those pallets and try to <laughs> and try to do it. So we actually went and bought a pallet from a uh, bulk uh, bulk dot com. This is the place you can order online and they, they send you the pallets or whatever. And um, we made a pa uh, unboxing on my channel. I was driving home from work. I got a text message through my website on my phone and it popped through and it was a producer for A&E. And wow. not a lot of people know this story. <laughs> it was a producer for A&E. You heard it here first. Yeah, uh, sorry, you're here first. <laughs> well, he, the, the guy was like, "Hey, man, um, you know, I, I saw your video about uh, palette unboxing on YouTube. You got a minute to chat." So this guy calls me from California, and he's like, "I'm a producer for A and E, and we're trying to come up with the show. And uh, you know, I, I love to see you and your sister do some more videos, just see how y'all are on camera and stuff like that." Palette jacking. We had to make a, a whole channel for it just to to show it was like our demo reel. Um, you know, for, for that show, which the show did come out. We didn't get on the show, but the show did come out. It was extreme unboxing. So that's where that whole channel came from. Now, when when A and E reached out to you, did you have any experience of like recording and putting videos together, editing? I or so was it all new at, at once. It so it's so weird because my palette jacking channel, I feel like I'm more creative on that channel. I make more like creative videos. I don't know if it's because I've, uh, it's not my main brand channel. So I feel like I can make whatever I want to over there. But uh, I learned a lot from like storytelling on that channel. And, uh, you know, on my channel, TJ Love Lady, it's more about informational. You know, I'm giving you like facts about things and um, I'm giving you different tools and stuff to use for your business on that channel. You're liable to see anything. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I it may be some drone footage going in or I, I may be uh, I may have a skit at the beginning of the video. Um, I made like a full length. Well, it wasn't full length, but I made a movie, uh, <laughs> a scary yeah. movie. Actually, it's yeah. time to make another one of those. Um, uh, it, it's a good timing right now that I seen it last night. The <laughs> eBay Society. The eBay Society. Yeah, it so was great. Like I was watching it and I'm laughing, but I'm also like. I'm intrigued and creeped out. Like the story was catching me yeah. and the characters who were playing in this folks, y'all got to go to this Facebook page. It is in doubt. It is, it is in the description. If you're not one to follow people on Facebook, but you want to see a really good clip to me, this is like Sundance worthy, <laughs> like editing. Like it was just really crisp, really good, 
uh, videography. And I'm like, man, he needs to do more of this. But it's not that easy to be creating stuff. It's back no. and forth. They even had credits in it. April is April your sister? She is. Yeah. April Burke. Yeah. And then those those are uh, I think a couple of other people mentioned in the credits. But um, you were like the main star. You and your dude, <laughs> we gotta go. Like no, really, we gotta go. <laughs> I was like laughing. <laughs> I like like the little play on words, you know. Some people are like, "Oh yeah, he's swearing." It's like, "No, I'm really scared." He's just not showing it like other people would. But people are like that. Yeah. We're unique, uh, unique in our own way. I was really fascinated by that. And I'm like, this guy needs to like create short movies. He would get awards and be nominated for stuff and get more exposure. Which reminds me of something that you said in one of your videos. You feel like you you aren't you didn't get what you thought you should are earned in YouTube, especially for doing it 12 years ago that I saw you could be doing it before, but on your channel 12 years ago, TJ love lady with glasses and braces. <laughs> I did. And, nice and just, I'm, I'm going to say like 10 pounds less, you know, 10, no, like 40, <laughs> <laughs> 10, like 40 pounds ago. <laughs> okay. You said it. I, I was, Try not to be mean, but a lot has a lot has changed since then from your first video. But you can see the mindset of where you see somebody like yourself. I was all over the place, but I could see from your first video to today, you polished yourself up. But it it's really in a good place where you knew what you want to do, and you're here now. But what have you learned through YouTube that has helped you in your personal life with being a videographer, content creator? What do you what do you want from it now? Even though you said you kind of wanted to step away at times. Yeah, it you know, it's it's a it's a back and forth with with YouTube. So YouTube with myself has changed, right? You know, so you know, 12 years ago, what people were, were creating on YouTube is not what they're creating today. And I got a funny story about me starting YouTube, like why why I even created a channel because I never was a person um that that wanted to talk on camera or thought I could talk on camera or, you know, you can't get me to shut up, but I, <laughs> I, I wasn't, I was a pretty, I'm a shy person. I'm a shy guy in real life, but you know, um, I had joined this multi-level marketing scheme and on that, that MLM scheme, we had to create a YouTube channel and we had to make these motivational videos. And it was like, you know, um, my coach was, her name was Tracy Walker. And she was like, yeah, you got to get on YouTube and, you know, you'll make some motivational videos and, and you'll be able to, you know, get a following of people and then you can, you know, get people into your sales funnel. And so that's why I created the the initial YouTube channel was, was for that. So if you go all the way back, which I think I've, I hope I private did those videos. Those videos are terrible. <laughs> Um, I was talking about, I was sitting on my couch with my braces and my glasses and I was talking about, um, you know, motivation, what motivates me and stuff like that. Well, I probably, probably a two year gap happened and, um, I started doing Amazon and, uh, you know, Amazon, I, I've had a bunch of different things that I've done with Amazon. I've sold, um, as a manufacturer on Amazon before. And I've also sold my resale and my liquidation stuff uh, on Amazon. So I started making videos about Amazon and those videos like blew up. Like at one point in time, I was like, uh, when fulfillment by Amazon, which is FBA, when it came out, I was like the number one video. Like if you search fulfillment by Amazon on Amazon, uh, on e uh, YouTube, my video was before Amazon's video, you know? So I was, uh, I grew in that way. Um, but, I started to get to where I didn't really want to make that type of, I didn't want to be just an Amazon FBA, mm -hmm. you know, guru or whatever, you know, I wanted to branch out and start doing other content. So that's why I started doing. You're more you know, than Amazon FBA. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon, it can be very lucrative if you, if you, if you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I but see you, um, Dante getting into it more. Um, he talked, he talks not so much about it. And that's one thing about Amazon they could get really good videos and people are trying to find out like, okay, what exactly are you getting? And it's just one of those platforms. You can't share what you're getting because it is competitive that way. It's yes. not like reselling on other platforms where it's like used items. It's a different business and policy platform to where it's like, if you share this information, you're taking away from your family, from your oh. own personal goals. And I think that's what annoys some people about Amazon, but I'm, I've always been one about if 
people are doing what they want and it helps them and I'm not involved in it. Like I, I don't care about Amazon. I hope people make sales on it. You know, I wish them well, but it doesn't pertain to me. So I don't hate on it, you know? Right. Well, I think, you know, you do have to do a, a little bit. It, it depends on what you're selling on Amazon. So if you're selling things that you've, you know, got out of the bins or you found at Goodwill, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think you have to gatekeep those types of things. But like if you are manufacturing, so this is what I, I started out doing was I actually had a product manufactured and I had, you know, I created the logo. I had to purchase a, a bar co a UPC code for it. And I actually I didn't jump on nobody else's listing. I actually created a listing for my specific item. Nobody else was selling it. And um, and and it took off and actually it took off on eBay more than it did on uh, on on uh, Amazon. And uh, but yeah, you can't tell somebody like, hey, I got this product right here and it's making me bank because they can literally go and order from China and get the same exact thing, you know, and and yeah, and do that. So there was um, when I was a security guard at the Wynn Casino, we would always use our, our ear mics, the little part to the walkie talkie, just yeah. a little black tubing. And the black ones were the more comfortable, softer ones compared to the the clear ones, the clear ones are look nice at first, but then all of a sudden you start seeing all that earwax yeah. and gunk and it starts turning some type of green, yellow, moldy <laughs> color. And I was like, man, I kept having to order these every few months and it was affordable, but it made me curious. I went on to Alibaba mm -hmm. and for me buying like five of or four of these earpieces for like $17. I could have bought a thousand of them on Alibaba for a hundred dollars. Oh yeah. And that's when my head was like, maybe I should get on Amazon just for this. Yeah. Or let me sell them at work. And I told a friend this who I could trust to tell and he wouldn't tell nobody else. He was like, damn, you could make some really good money because all these security guards, there are at least 300 per day at least. And there's three shifts So multiply that times three. And usually we're losing this stuff and I could make some really good money on the side. But then I would be putting my position in jeopardy and they're like, you can't be doing that oh, at yeah. work. But I ended up selling some stuff to some management <laughs> and telling them about it. They're like, well, we we are supposed to order them and sell them to you. Yeah. And I was like, well, what if I get them, <laughs> you sell them and I just get a cut, you know, yeah. a thousand pieces for like a hundred bucks. I was like, this is genius. So if anybody's on Amazon, you might want to look that up because they, so very fast and it's, it's not just security guards but if you only think about security guards think about how much casinos there are how much people need security how much people use those walkie talkies just that little black piece you need that for the radio if not everybody's going to hear your business so, um, well, so you can, if you can find a product you know my product that i had which i can tell you now because i don't sell them no more but there was yeah. there was these Wait. silicone watches that oh. um and the white ones for doctors and nurses I mean, they would sell out. I would have to get between 500 to 1,000 of them a week. That's how fast they were selling on, on, on Amazon and eBay. And um, which, of course, now this is before like Apple Watches and stuff. This is like you know, 12 years ago, apparently. <laughs> and, and so, you know, people, they started buying like these Apple Watches with the white bands. But doctors and, and nurses like wearing white watches and bracelets and things like that so that's why i was selling but it was a guy that he had about five products on amazon and he was making like i don't know like two hundred thousand dollars a month on his his amazon purchases and i remember um he was in the same group that i was in when i was making these those first youtube videos and he had uh i don't even know if his brand is still but it was like who baby and the the uh, it was like an owl, like who? And what he had was teething rings, but he had them as necklaces, like decorative necklaces that mm -hmm. the moms could wear, and then they can have it on, and you know the baby can teeth on it. But it looked like a piece of jewelry. And he would order a case of them, and he would say, you know, I just paid two hundred fifty dollars for this case of them, but this is five thousand dollars worth of Amazon, you know, product. And you send it to Amazon, and they take care of it. You know, that was like the great, like the mind blown. Thing is that you can send it to Amazon and then they take care of it. you. Don't have to do any shipping. You don't have to do nothing. <laughs> send it to Amazon and they do all of it. Yeah, those little pacifiers are pretty unique. There's a, I have a, a goddaughter now and we just ordered some and the pacifiers now are pretty creative, especially of them not dropping because sometimes it's just in the mouth. Oh yeah, they don't want the little chain. 
Yeah. There's some special ones that they don't fall out somehow. I don't okay. know. I don't get it. To me, I was like, they're they're gonna drop it. You just <laughs> you're just being sold on a gimmick. But go ahead, babe. It's your money. Um, <laughs> and about the white silicone. For my wife, she's a nurse, and mm-hmm. I know she can't get certain things because of work. Mm-hmm. Their uniform, I'm, I'm not going to say the color because some people do live here in Vegas. I might figure it out, but I'll say it's green. <laughs> okay. And they're only allowed to wear certain colors. And it tell, she's told me their color reason reasoning is because each department has their own color. Ah, So okay. that's it may not be all the hospitals or clinics, but for her, that's that reason. But a lot of her watches are white. Okay. And her shoes now they have let them be more creative and but it's usually her uniform is usually all green. No yes, characters they, on it or anything, but it depends what department you're in. They Not so much what high school, ho- hospital. Those white watches may have made me like tens of thousands of dollars on Amazon. And I was ordering, it's crazy because when I first started ordering them, I had to negotiate for like two months to get the price that I wanted, to to get the design, uh, to get the logo right. Um, you know, I'll, there was all the inner workings of because they was manufacturing this product for me. And uh, I finally got to a price that was good. And uh, they sent me the first shipment and it was like 100 or something like that. And I got a assorted color. So I got like 25 white and, you know, 25 blue, 25 black. And then the white sold out immediately. They sold out like quick. And then so I was like, well, maybe I order 50 more white and then they sell that quick. So then I had to order 100 whites. And then I was ordering like different colors, but I was ordering like 500 to 1000, like I said, at the time. Um, But it took a long time to get to where I actually had the product landed. And that's that's why I started making YouTube videos about it, because I was like, you know, maybe somebody else want to do this process. You know, I'm not going to necessarily tell them what I'm selling, but, you know, I can show that process because I feel like anybody can do this. You know, a lot of people probably don't know. This was back when, like I said, FBA first started, you know, it was something like brand new um, to people. And if, if I had to stuck with that, I think my channel probably would have been a lot, probably more than what it is now, because I see the people that back when I was starting where they're at, <laughs> you know, and they're up here mm-hmm. and I'm still, I'm still down here. <laughs> Which is okay, so fine, the people fine. that when you started and were following that you're thinking about right now, are they still doing the same thing though of Amazon? Uh, some of them are doing Amazon. Um, a lot of them have switched over from actually selling on Amazon to selling courses on how to do Amazon. You know, so they they'll sell uh, a course on how to get ungated in uh in different categories. You know, like you can get ungated in, in Nike, so you can go buy nike stuff and sell it on amazon um because it's more lucrative because now you're just selling an idea or you're selling content to somebody and you don't actually have to physically do all the shipping and all the stuff that goes goes in now that one guy that i was talking about he still does sell um on amazon he does he does very well he's always showing screenshots like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in his his amazon account i'm like yes (laughs) that could have been me (laughs) when it came to YouTube and me leaving, cause you said you're, you left for about two years yeah. and I left for about a year or just shy of that. And when I came back, I was looking at the people who I started with and I'm like, man, that could have been me, but it's not entirely true. There's some people that could grow faster than you yeah. in less time. Uh, for me, it's been five years in the making, but it's only really been one year that I've been full time. And with the more time that I have, I've just been applying that to YouTube and reselling, trying to balance things out. Yeah. You being a creative minded person and very unique in your skits and editing, how do you make time with what you're doing in your life with the editing? Because you have to be pretty busy unless you got like a backlog of these videos. Well, it's actually I was thinking about this actually today because um a lot of people probably don't realize that I have I have like a full-time job and it's not like I mean I have a pretty like high level I'm like a, a like executive level job like in the executive government executive ninja yeah <laughs> well I work I, I'll tell you I work um for a nuclear power plant um for one of the the uh, the country's uh, like top three utilities and um and so that's why a lot of my content that I make on like TikTok and stuff, I'm making fun of like corporate because that's what I do every day. It's like corporate, you know, corporate stuff. And it's funny because people uh, are so intrigued when I tell them that, you know, I got a YouTube channel. I got a, um, <laughs> you know, I got a what TikTok. Do do? 
<laughs> they, they love it. They love going on there and watching it and stuff like that. But you know, it's um, it's it's hard to balance. I, I actually don't. For a long time in my life, I felt like I could get all this stuff done. I'm I'm always like I'm a busy person. I'm I'm always getting stuff done, and and I've got this project and that project going on. Um, I never sit ar- sit around and do like nothing. <laughs> I feel guilty when I'm not doing anything. But for some reason, like the last year, like year or two years, um, I've actually felt like I'm I'm overwhelmed almost because having like two YouTube channels, trying to edit videos for both of those, um, then getting into like short form video, TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff and editing the videos for those. And then plus going to work, I got a new position, but and it's like a different stress level and doing all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, on top of all that stuff, having my hobbies which i like doing 3d printing um i like making t-shirts um i have fish i have turtles <laughs> i mean i got like a lot of stuff going on i got sometimes are they, are they alive or are they like <laughs> what <laughs> are they plushes i just because no, you're they, a they my, my my fishes and my turtles are they're thriving <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah it's 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 hard it's hard to balance something uh i saw an analogy today a guy had like five cups and he was like you know this is your time and effort that you have and he filled it up and then he had the other five cups and he poured you know different levels in it. he's like man you can't do everything you know something if you want to focus on something something else is going to suffer you know so i think that with my channel it suffered i didn't post videos for like on my channel in recent times um it was like a six month period where i didn't post anything and it's so weird how youtube is my my channel grew more in those six months where I didn't post anything than when I'm posting videos. <laughs> wow. I don't know how and I don't know why, but that's, that's just the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> that is strange. And that reminded me of looking back on mine. It's like, how the hell did I get 3000 views of not doing nothing? And for the long, what it felt like the longest time when I came back, I was like, I'm not getting any views, but how are these dead videos going? But that's the good thing about YouTube compared to other platforms is that if you kick it back in gear, it'll it'll catch up. And people say their old videos aren't getting views. Yeah. One thing I've been doing to get try to get views on them mm-hmm. to pick them back up, especially now that I'm monetized, I want my past work to work for itself. But it, it still yeah. involves me uh, giving it a little assistance. At the end of my videos, as they say, direct people to your next video or past video. Yeah. I'll put show this video some love, like a little text or a throwback something that's just a little different every time so it's yeah people are very familiar with what they do in a routine you know the intro so it's like oh here's the intro hurry up skip yeah Yeah. kind of throw it off a few seconds it was like oh it throws them off guard i was like you know what i'll let it play same thing at the end if for a lot of my viewers thank you thank you very much do watch to the very end to where (laughs) one of my videos i ended up leaving a new wave hot plate in the cart i didn't catch it but people in the video caught it and I was right. like, yeah, I got it. I know. I thought I got it. I went back. I looked at my garage, looked at my truck. I was like, crap, let me look at the video. I looked at the video. I picked up the bag, Goodwill bag, and it was under it. See? <laughs> I didn't catch it because my view, you know, with my my eyes were different than on my chest, the harness, yeah. the GoPro. The viewers were able to see it and tell me, and I called. And fortunately, it wasn't there. But that, that was my mistake. And it's just cool how people catch things you know oh yeah they're, but, um, they're very perceptive about what you got in your background <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> and and they're helpful a lot of a lot of people that are coming onto my my channel are very helpful and they're not belittling in the beginning i felt it was kind of going to be like tiktok where people are very judgmental oh, and yeah. carry american arbitrage said this uh, last week people like in shorts are more judgmental because they're not on your actual channel so they could care less about what you are. Oh yeah. So for any anybody else of what their channel content is based off of, and that made a lot of sense. But that's also why I like talking to people. I like hearing other people's input. So that way, I kind of get a mindset of understanding. And with your channel going the way it is, you picked up a lot. It's picked up to be way the way you, I see you now on your camera, mm-hmm. very crispy in a good way, and nice colors. And even to your thumbnails, you kind of have like your own color scheme is that something you looked at and said hey i need to change this up rather than kind of being tacky and bland you're like well i like this though the so youtube is they like 
thumbnails. That's you know, that's one of the things that they always talk about. What on, man? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, YouTube likes thumbnails, and they like what you're saying. You know, they like um, they use those clues to to show your videos to more people. And what I found is that my older videos, I wasn't really paying a lot of attention to my thumbnails. It was like a screenshot of the video. Um, you know, it, maybe it, it had like a bunch of text on the screen that didn't really have anything to do with really what the the good part of the video was. Um, so I started looking at other people's videos that were successful. I'm like, well, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> you know, I, so that's, that's where I, I switched it up. And I'm actually about to switch my stuff up um, again because I've been looking at some other these platforms they change you know they change daily <laughs> you know they yeah. not necessarily daily but they change you know they change pretty regularly the algorithms and stuff like that and a guy was actually talking about um you know going back to your old videos like you was talking about but he was like if you go back to some of your old videos and find look at your videos that are performing well take those thumbnails and make the exact same thumbnail for a video that's not performing well and he showed like several um instances where he did that and he would literally post it uh change the thumbnail this these are old videos like videos he posted months and months ago and they'll get an uptick you know i'm talking about tens of thousands of views uptick because he put a different thumbnail on that old video you know so i i think the thumbnail is very important because it's something that i i think that we cognitive you know, we cognitively, they, how you say that? You, you think of, you think about it, but you don't think about it. You know, when you're scrolling through YouTube and, you know, a thumbnail jumps out at you, you know, you're going to click on it. Um, I I work a little bit differently. I I support people. So when they pop on my thumb uh, on my page, if I see their video pop on my page, I go in, I look at it. I watch a lot of YouTube on my TV. Um, but I bet you do. You, <laughs> oh, do you? I bet you do. I do. I watch. I watch it. I don't watch it on my phone. I don't watch it on the on the computer. I'm always on my TV watching uh, watching YouTube. And the the thing that I found about YouTube is that now the way that they promote videos is not necessarily. You don't have to be subscribed to a channel for them for YouTube mm -hmm. to show you videos from a person. If you watch a couple of their videos and you like their videos and you like that topic. They're going, they put you into this box. And if you're in this box, they're going to promote those videos to, to you if you like those videos. So like, I don't watch a lot of reselling videos. So when I go to try to support uh, other reseller videos, I have to go and search their channel because my page doesn't have those, their videos on my, it don't matter if I'm subscribed or not. Mm. So it like my, my, if you go to my YouTube page, there's a, a little bar at the top and it says, it's got like all your different topics that you like. So like mine says like reptiles because I like snake videos. I don't know why, but <laughs> I like snake videos. And then it'll say, um, it'll probably say Disney. I like watching like uh, theme park, Disney theme park videos. Um, and then I don't know what the other one, the other one probably would be like, uh, I've been watching these police uh, uh, first amendment audit videos. So those are probably the top three videos. So when I'm looking at my feed, that's what's on my feed. So all of my reselling channels like Regina and Derek uh, all these people that I, I watch that I'm subscribed to, they're not on my YouTube page, you know? So this is something to think about when you, when you're making your videos, <laughs> think about what, what box they're going to put you in. Cause they're going to put you in a box. I, it might've been your recent channel about how YouTube views you and how they're going to promote you along with somebody else that I was watching earlier today. Um, and the guy has quite a bit of views. He has a crap load of following. I forget his name. I just ended up coming across it. Mm -hmm. It was interested because of YouTube talking about shorts right now. Yeah. And for, I think everybody who's in the social media, like in the chat room right now, uh, whether they are content creators or just supporters, thank you so much. But they're talking about, what was it? A hundred million views in 90 oh, days? A million views? To, to get to you talking about to get monetized 10 million right. views which is a lot 10 million views yes to you have in three in three months you gotta have 10 million views on your shorts to get monetized on youtube shorts which is it, a lot it, i'm not a math person which is why i'm an artist <laughs> but my artist math says if you have even let's say a thousand video a thousand shorts you, you could still get 4,000 watch hours way faster than the 10 million views. Yeah, right. So I would prefer to do 
sh- shorter content videos than shorts or both if you can. But- well, I think the reason that they chose that number is because there's a lot of, I think their data is a little bit skewed right now. And I think they're going to get feedback on that because they've actually, yeah. do you ever do the, the, do you ever get the surveys that they send out? Yeah. Okay, so I always make sure I take time to do those surveys because, Me too. I, you know, I, I feel like they should help with a little bit because I, I feel like they every time I get it, it's a little bit different. And I feel like they're incorporating some of the feedback they've, they've gotten for those questions. But I think they're looking at that 10 million views because there's a lot of channels that repost videos and those videos go. I mean, they get 26 million views. So they can have one video. They get 10 million views. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think it's that hard to get 10 million views if you post that viral vid those viral types of videos um but just for the average joe me and you it's gonna be hard to get those 10, 000, <laughs> 10 million views i can I tell you that like right now to, i would like you to take that back because i have <laughs> not have had I- anybody in the chat have any of you had a viral video um whether on any social media let me know tiktok instagram youtube youtube short a reel on some sort let me know what your viral video was, how much views, and what was it on. This gentleman right here has had some viral videos. I have not had a viral video. But how much viral videos have you had? So, I, so okay, let's talk about YouTube first. So, on YouTube, I've never had a what I would consider a viral video in terms of what I know a vid- how I know a video can f- perform. Mm-hmm. Now, I have had a video that got a hundred million, a uh, hundred million, a hundred thousand views in three hours. Jeez. And uh, that was that was the most money I've made from one three hour period <laughs> on any video I've ever made on any platform I've ever made. Mm. Um, but other than that, I, uh, outside of that, that hundred thousand views on <clears> YouTube, <throat> that's my maximum. I, I think I've made, I think the highest video I have on YouTube is like 150,000 views or something like that. But on uh, Instagram, I had a video that got 22 million views. So it's it, it, 22 that, million folks. That I, that's not even two, like two, comma <laughs> and a whole bunch of zeros. Million. <laughs> well, that's not even like fathomable to me. Like 22 million, and I don't even know how it got there. I don't even. I, it's I, I got a screenshot in my phone. I just saw it the other day, and I remember when I posted that video. And I did a screenshot of it because I was happy. It had like a thousand and seventy six views or something. <laughs> and and then I got to work an hour later and I looked at it and it was like ten thousand views. But going viral is not the best thing because people like in the that. comments are like crazy and people say some crazy stuff. When you get up to a million, are you talking about like I think I had sixty five hundred comments? on that video so you gotta think about six thousand comments like what are all these people saying <laughs> you know, it, um so it's not you know it's it's not all I, people that go viral all the time they have to have really thick skin i can tell you that <laughs> i got good meds <laughs> <laughs> i got really good meds i didn't no, make, I don't tell you I didn't make I, twelve hundred dollars off that video i will say that that, that, that was a good good thing twelve hundred dollars <laughs> that yeah. that's that can definitely help somebody for a whole month, you know, oh, yeah. $1,200 for some people who have that, like nothing. Um, one of my cousins, rest in peace, um, a few years ago, he was like, Sonny, what are you doing? You still doing your t-shirt business? And I'm like, yeah. And I was like, I'm trying to work my way up to get some machines because I'm here in Hawaii or here in Vegas now. And when we moved here, our stuff got stolen. So now I got to try to get everything back. Yeah. And we weren't even 24 hours of moving from Hawaii to here and our place got broken into and and raided as we left the, the morning just to go pick up some hangers. Things weren't even unboxed yet. We slept on the floor and um, I was trying to get it. He's like, how much money are you trying to raise? I was like, 500. He's like, 500. I make that in an hour. And I'm just like, that's not encouraging. You know, right. like, I thought he was going to come with like, Hey, you know what? I'll be a partner with you or something. I would have loved that. But it wasn't, he was like, I make that in an hour. I'm like, some people got it. Some people don't. And $1,200 could make a big difference for people. Yeah. It was, big I difference. mean, it- you know, I've I've made some pretty good money on YouTube. It's it's going up and down. It's like a roller coaster with with YouTube. But YouTube, YouTube, you can make the most money off of. I think out of all the platforms, to be honest with you, if you're just looking at ad revenue. Um, but I think on like TikTok and Instagram, I think you have uh, more opportunities to grow your channel or grow your platform 
to where people will give you sponsored videos. So that's where a lot of TikTokers make their money is with sponsored videos because TikTok, the the creator fund don't pay anything. So, I mean, you can get, I think I had like 1.3 million views last month on TikTok and I got paid $43. So it's not, it's not, it ain't, it's not great on, on TikTok. <laughs> I, I look at the views like that. Um, sure, it's, it's great to make money you know, on things that you're already doing, like right. creating content. Yeah. But I look at it as like, with that money on top, nice. It's, so, it's, it's, I'm paying for myself. This is yeah. something I thought I should have got a long time ago, but really it was me just not putting in a time. Like I have been, like I said, for this full year of being a full-time reseller compared mm-hmm. to the four years prior of being a part-time reseller. Yeah. But now that my eyes are more open and I have people like the niche lady and Mikey bags of money in here, um, carry American arbitrage. They're like, look, this could be you. Yeah. You just got to keep at it. Yeah. And it's, it's not so much the money you make say that you make on YouTube, but I'm looking at the opportunities I could probably create for myself or for other people as well, especially networking with other people right. um, that I didn't have before because I just, I'm just going to be watching people. And that was never me. I've always been somebody who'd want to do more and, try things out. And I, I like the feeling of being scared yeah. to fail. Like, man, I, I don't think I'll do good, but it's, I, I like that feeling and I, I thrive off of it rather than not nah, let, let TJ answer first, you know, I'll get back to you. <laughs> now it's like, I raise my hand and it doesn't matter what I say, but I'm going to be the first one to talk. Cause usually the second one to talk in the room is going to be, yeah, what he said or what she said. Right. And I can't stand that. I was like, <laughs> be original, be yourself. Do not say the same answer. The first person did. Because yeah. then it's like a domino effect. The third person, oh, what he said. Yeah. Fourth person, oh, yeah, like they said. Like, no, <laughs> we are not the same, you know? <laughs> not at all. But um, I do have uh, Bob. Is Bob in the house? Bob Bazaar, I recognize his name. Um, very good, very good person up on here. Very good supporter. And I see that there's a YouTube membership. And I got, I got something, folks. I said I've been working on something for this and also the Super Chats. I already had that one, but this one I have something. Hopefully, Bob is in here, and I'm going to play it. Give me a second. Round up the team. We got another one. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Let me try that again. Round up the team. We got another one. It's a pretty good graphic there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, we got another one. (laughs) Um, If you want to know how I made that, I made that uh, illustrator. I make the characters myself. Do you um, really? Yeah. Uh, I made the character myself. That is me if you didn't recognize it. Just with the hat. <laughs> and I made it on CapCut. I made it last night within probably like five minutes back and forth. They have some really good stuff on it. And it was actually Ray who's on here, uh, Nigel Flippers, um, who told me about CapCut. And then I think Carrie told me afterwards. I so, love um, CapCut. That's, the CapCut is like a game changer, man. Especially for like short form content, man, dad. Uh. <laughs> Folks, there, there, uh, there's right now on CapCut. Um, I was looking at it last night, kind of more into it rather than what I was looking like. Let me edit stuff. I was like, let me see what's on this app that I may be missing out on. Um, and they have things where you re-edit somebody else's video, like a celebrity, somebody famous. So you could win prizes off of using their template and using their, their app. They have something on there right now. I'm working on some last thing. And Cena is like, I have better chance of people than they're just like, I jumped on and be Amazon. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way, but it is some pretty good. Uh, <laughs> you have to have there real quick. <laughs> I think they get a they're gonna repost your video, which is opportunity to be exposed, right? That's a huge one. It's already a huge app. And there's like two other things um that you could get from it. And I was just like, wow, I'm I'm gonna try that out. Well, so, you know, you know, TikTok free, owns yeah. CapCut. They're, What's that? TikTok, TikTok owns CapCut. Do they? Yeah. That yeah, makes they sense because their, their they, songs they are on there too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why it's, it's integrated. Well, so that's why that's how they're able to do those those things because it is is essentially TikTok, mm. you know. So I didn't realize they had like the templates on there, like you talking about. I yeah. I just figured it out like five days ago. I was like, oh, what's what's this button right here? <laughs> it's got all these templates and stuff you can. And that's the, kind of the same thing on YouTube. 
Mikey has been one uh, that would say stuff. Mikey bags of money about YouTube. Um, he would mention things either in person or online. And I think some people just are focused on entertainment. And I'm more of one. I soak something in and I run with it. It, it stays. A, I got ringing in the ear, but this is like a good ring in the ear when somebody has a something that just sticks to me. And I'm like, what yeah. was TJ talking about? I need to investigate uh, or I could simply ask you. I'm pretty sure you would respond. Oh, yeah. But I like to ask things on my own. And then I'm like, OK, I got this far. Now I'm stuck. What's up, TJ? What do I do from <laughs> here? You know, maybe somebody would be able to help. But um, ladies and gents, I have not said hello to you. I don't think so. Um, I've been caught up with this uh, mastermind of a thousand faces and wigs. TJ <laughs> love lady. Even back <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Your editing is just, it cracks me up, but it's also good for me as a content creator to just be a little bit more loose, you know, have more fun. Um, yeah. like yours for like that. And then looking at your video on YouTube, um, the information that you give them, like that's, that's really nice information. And I wish it would, it would benefit me other than learning from you. I would say, you know, like, uh, when I follow people, it's either the information you're giving or how they're editing and how they talk. And I was like, I like that style. Like, that's what I've been trying to do, you know, and like, you got it. I just need to twist it in my own way because um, I can't I can't uh, wear wigs like you. I don't think so. My hair, <laughs> my hair will be too hot with some wigs on. I so, get all those from my, my liquidation palettes. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the one with that jerry curl that you had and you're oh, not yeah. even talking. It's just like. Those like make, make the, these small faces. The videos that you don't put a lot of time and effort into, those the ones that goes like that goes like crazy. It's the ones you spend hours editing, you know, making the edits on and putting music and cutting to. And those videos do nothing. And then the video you make quickie, like real quick, it just. Hey, well, ladies and gents, thanks. Thank you for coming in. Um, I'm here enjoying uh, TJ Love Lady. And a very unique last name, I would say. But before we get to your last name and the history of it, if if you want to share it, what does TJ stand for? All right. So TJ um, stands for Tony Jr. So I'm a junior. So my real name is actually Anthony. Um, and But I've always been TJ, even before I was born. They, you know, they, they always just referred to me as Tony Jr. Um, but my sister, which is April, uh uh, she's my only sister, but we had another sister that was stillborn, and actually, my mom was gonna get her tubes tied uh, whenever she had that that second baby, but she didn't. And, and of course, I'm I'm like a miracle. I'm a miracle baby. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's T Tony Junior. Um, and my dad, his name is Anthony, of course, but everybody calls him Tony. So neither one of us go by our real names. <laughs> we got. I deleted badly performing videos. Uh, that's something I've been hearing about lately too. Um, comments on my videos and people talking about their videos on other channels that I'm following. Do you recommend people deleting videos? Never delete a video. I have, and I wish I could go and look and see what video it was. It's, so I, I saw somebody comment about, um, they was talking about their, how many views they've had on like a viral video. And I think they said like 129,000 views on like a, uh, evergreen, evergreen video. I posted, I've got several videos that I posted like three years ago and those videos didn't pop off until like day 375, like over a year. They didn't, they was at 200 views and then all of a sudden they just went like crazy. And those videos, I've actually made more money on those videos than any of my other videos. So never, never delete your videos because, you know, everybody's videos don't get you know, like crazy thousand. You, you I mean you're not gonna post a video like Phil a Flipper and Paul and get like ten thousand views on your video on every video. Yeah. Um, my videos don't perform like that. You know, I post a video and I may have seventy five views for the next three weeks, and then all of a sudden they'll start going because I try to, I, I try to make that evergreen content, and I try to make content that people are going to be searching for two, three years from now, you know, so my, my videos that I made three years ago is still relevant today because it's information based. It's, you know, it's information. I've been hearing more about at. evergreen, I think for the past two weeks. Yeah. And from what I took from it is that people who are doing evergreen videos, it's more for the long run that yeah. the views are going to end up taking off 
later on because it's something people are going to look for mm -hmm. continuously. It, yeah. it doesn't fade out like I went to the thrift store and found this. Yeah, uh, more of entertainment unless you're teaching in the video and have something highlighted for people to understand, which is something I'm thinking about, too, is like, how do I get my titles to mention something or thumbnails without being too much? And my thumbnails and titles are still a working progress. How do you feel about your um, your thumbnails? I'll say are great, but I would say your um, my titles, titles suck. I think my I think my thumbnails and my title suck. I think they're both bad. I and like your I like your thumbnails. I love. Them. I, I, I try I to. I appreciate. I appreciate that because I I really tried to make them like where they're clickable, where people want to go, and I try different things to see what works best. But like I go back and I look at my videos that have performed well, and you know my my older videos that have performed well, and a lot of those are those thumbnails aren't really great. <laughs> So, you know, it's kind of like one of those, like the gurus, they say, oh, you got to do this. You got to change this. And then I'll go look at my content and the videos that I have performed best follow none of those guidelines, you know. So I think it's it's just based on your channel and based on on your audience and 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 based on, you know, your niche. Because, like I said, it, YouTube puts you into a box. And if 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 that box is not if you don't have a real box. So like, OK, reselling. Let's talk about reselling real quick. So reselling, there's a box for reselling. And if you are a garage, if you go to garage sales or if you are going to thrift stores, that's reselling. That's the reselling box. So if you don't do that stuff, then you're not going to get the views. You're not going to get those immediate, you know, 10,000 views on the video. It's just, it's not going to happen. Um, so when you go and I look at people that do liquidation, um, some people that do like Amazon, the Amazon mystery boxes and stuff like that. Unless you have like a lot of subscribers, those videos aren't going to perform well with the reseller community. You're going to have to be more so um, geared towards entertainment versus, you know, you find like a grill or you find like a bolo or something like that. Because, of course, it's random. We you know you get liquidation pallets and you get Amazon mystery boxes. It's all mystery. So you don't know what you're, get, you're getting. Yeah, just <laughs> you, until, until you open it and look at it. Those, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So it's it's just it's a different it's a kind of different thing. But YouTube haven't hasn't figured out that liquidation Amazon mystery box thing yet. So that's not, there's no box to put us in. So when we post videos, YouTube don't know where to put it. No, they don't know where to who to send it to, you know, because it's just it's, it's entertainment. It's not I'm not you know, it's not. It's not that click video where you say, oh, I found this this rare 1917, <laughs> you know, coin or something like that. that I can make ten thousand dollars on. So. It's just it's all about what, what kind of content you, you're posting. I, I've noticed um, for a few. Well, when I started my channel, I was wanting to do more of a vlog style. My mm -hmm. what I do the gym and at home sharing my like my wife in the in the video. And then reselling, I was trying to have more of a vlog style and it wasn't panning out until I just right. said, you know what, I'm just going to do reselling. And I was mainly going to uh, thrift stores and then I was getting a little bit of views. I wasn't getting much. Um, somebody left a comment that they barely get 50 views. I think I was getting like maybe 20 something views. Yeah. And it's only because I was making like 49 other YouTube accounts and watching my own stuff. Right. No, not really. That's <laughs> yeah. You had to run um, in the background. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Hey, neighbor. Hey, everybody, sending stuff to just spamming all my my phone Rolodexes." But when I started getting into flea markets with Danny the Niche Lady and with her, she has a huge following. So people were coming over and supporting. Thank you very much, Joan. <laughs> um, um, she has been a, a great support. But I noticed when I was doing the flea markets for several months, it went faster than what I thought. I thought I was only doing it for a few weeks. Yeah. Everybody was just loving the flea markets. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to drop a bomb on them. And this <laughs> is not on them. It's on me. And I know it's and, and maybe it's just one of those things. I, I thought of it into fruition. I spoke it into fruition. And I said, this is going to be a bomb, a bad one. Like, it's not going to do good. Went to a thrift store. And I got some comments, supported comments like, hey, it's good to see you by yourself. You know, you get to talk to us. It sounds like we have all of your attention. So even though I got less views, I had really good comments and feedback to where it's like, OK, it doesn't always have to be one thing, but it's similar. It's still recent. Right. Yeah. And a little bit more into is like people are saying they love learning and I like to be entertaining 
when I can. Sometimes I don't feel like talking, so I'll do a voiceover. Right. Um, so I'm just trying to balance now of like the entertaining part, which I, I think I'm okay at, but also teaching at the same time. So that way there's still value rather than just a giggle that you could take away from the laugh. And right. some people go back and watch them and it's just these little things it was like I catch or people tell me. But if it wasn't for the feedback um, that say you received, would that have made a difference or would you still be trying to figure things out if it wasn't for people commenting? Uh, I, I definitely take people's feedback. I, uh, people, people are going to give you feedback. That's just, you know, that's the internet. Even you if know, you people, don't ask for it. Yeah. Yeah, even if you, it's going to be unsolicited, they're going to give you the feedback, but you know, it, well, I, I'm kind of a weird guy where I don't like being put in the box. So that's why I think me and you two don't really mesh well. Um, because like you, you're talking about, I, I can post like, uh, Walmart clearance videos. I started posting Walmart clearance videos because I saw, um, some people posting those clearance videos and, and I said, well, I'm gonna go try it just to see, just like, you you know, he's like, I'm gonna go try this thrift, thrift store. So I went to the, the clearance and I didn't know what, what I was doing. I wasn't finding nothing. I was like, ain't no, you know, clearance in here. What are they talking about? They making that up. And I actually <laughs> told myself one day, I said, no, I'm going to actually go in here and I'm going to get everything set up to where I can find the clearance prices. I can scan everything. And, uh, and I, I mean, it was, I found the clearance. I actually found all these clearance items and it was like a bunch of toys. And I was like, well, I'm gonna rack up on all these toys. But then I post that video and it gets like crazy. I mean, thousands of views in the first day. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what, what, what is this about? Well, then I was like, well, that was just a fluke of nature. Cause it was the first one we did. But then I post the next one, it get thousands of views. Then I post the next one, it get thousands of views. And so I got to a point where I'm like, I don't want to be a Walmart clearance channel. That's not my, that's not my life. I don't want to, <laughs> I can post it and get views, but it, you know, am I going to, am I going to be happy as a content creator going to Walmart, creating the kind of the same video every single time? And now the answer to that was no. So I completely 100% cut off the Walmart clearance videos and it about killed my channel. It did. I, the next video I posted, 50 views <laughs> and the video before it got 65,000 views. Next video got 50 views. And, you know, I was just kind of like, I YouTube uh, so much wants you to like be in, uh, they want to put you in a, that box and they want you to create Got the same work. thing over and over and over again. And that's just not me. That's not the type of person. I'm not the same content type of dude. You know, I change my content based on how I'm feeling based on what's going on in my life. Um, and I try to, I try to bring my, you know, my current situation into it. So if stuff stuff's going on at my store or stuff's going on with me at work or stuff's going on down here in the studio, you know, I try to share those things, but I also try to give people value and stuff like that. So, but if I want to make, get views, I mean, I can post Walmart clearance videos all day long and get, you know, get the views. It, what do you say? I can do you that. Yeah. That's why I, need, I need to do some, some, some video reviews of people, people's channels. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've thought about this a while back of doing video reviews, and it came to mind when I was watching other people's channels who aren't resellers, but they, they do like the music video reviews. You know, they're like, oh, let's see how they're going to rap, or let's see how they sing, or let's see how they do something, and their reactions, uh, oh, yeah. reaction videos. And I was like, maybe I should do, I should try that. But still, it's, I, I would want to ask permission. And then there's probably be like, don't do this, Sonny, don't do that. <laughs> don't put me down. And it's like, I wouldn't. So it's like, that's one thing I wouldn't do. But you already have quite a bit of stuff stacked. And you right. said you're feeling overwhelmed. So I'm not sure if you would throw this on your plate too, like a dessert. Like I'll do this once a month. Well, I, I'm always up to try different things because you're, you're never, first. TJ said he's going to do it. You, you never you never know what you, you're going to do and you're going to actually enjoy doing until you until you do it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely I'm definitely up for, the, for trying it because, uh, you know, it, it could be the most viral thing that you've ever seen before in your life. <laughs> you never know until you until you try it. So I'm definitely down. I, I, I tried. It, it's it's funny because sometimes you Billy. So you get you're going to you get to a certain level if, if you're growing, your channel's growing and you're going to get to a level where you're going to be. Um, what's the word I want to say? Unrelatable, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some people, especially in like the reselling niche that have gotten to a level where they're unrelatable. So any kind of tips that they give you. 
I feel like if you make it on YouTube, it's it's luck. You went to the slot machine, you put in a twenty dollar bill, and just so happened when you pulled that thing, you just you had one video or two videos that just popped off really great, and you got a whole bunch of subscribers, and now YouTube likes you, and then if you keep posting those same types of videos, you're going to keep getting more views and more subscribers because they're going to support and, you and more things, and you're going to keep making that stuff because you're because you're getting the views, you're getting the the growth that you want, right? You know, it's like a drug. You know, you you you're gonna keep feeding feeding the beast, and you're gonna keep growing. Well, then, so when you tell me you got you know a, a two hundred thousand subscribers, and you're gonna tell me, well, all you gotta do is is, is be consistent. All you gotta do is do this. Well, <laughs> everybody's consistent. Everybody's posting videos consistently. Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly procrastinating. <laughs> yeah, and that's my consistency. <laughs> yeah, right. It's procrastination. It's, it's, well, everybody has their everybody has their um their cadence for posting videos, right? So me. I used to post I, at one point I was posting like three to four videos a week. I mean, I would post, you know, I was posting three to four videos consistently a week. I was getting far, far less views than when I was posting one video a week when I was posting four videos a month, you know? So I see people on their channel and they post one video a month and they get, you know, they post their one video a month and they may get, <laughs> they may get 250,000 views mm -hmm. on that one video because it's such a good video they put all their effort into to this one video and their channel you know grows from that one one video that they post a month you know so everybody's situation is, is different so like when i see those gurus or i see those people and they're, they're like oh well you gotta do this you gotta do that everything doesn't work for for everybody you know <laughs> what well, i'm <laughs> selling my, bags of money. my my best video so far has been um, one where lady hit Mikey bags of money's cart and yeah. mine. So the thumbnail is she hit us. Yeah. And the title was she literally hit us. And I, I it wasn't clickbait because it actually happened. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that would just took off. And I was like, was it really? I went, I I, I looked at it like a, a week ago because Mikey reminded me when we went out of Savers, we met up with the uh, Danny Dinich lady, Carrie, who doesn't have a channel, but she is a, uh, somebody on youtube to me um man in person she's a great person and then tiffany thrifting vegas so and he was like hey congrats on your 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 20k video and i'm like oh yeah you know it's <laughs> awesome so it made me think like let me go back at, or i was telling him i was like at the same time i was like you know my thrift videos aren't doing well and he's like what are you talking about he was like that was a thrift video i was like yeah but i had friends in there and it was more interactive and I went back to look at it, and I think why it did so good is because the music that started off yeah. and how we were moving, like, hey, we got to go. Come on, let's go. And it matched the movement like a rush. And people yeah. were, like, already engaged and wanting to follow along. Mm -hmm. And it took off that way. And I think that's what captured and it. It gained, like, 250 subscribers from, like, a week ago. I think it's gone up since. Um, but it's just, like, I don't want to be the type that, like I always gotta have that video and like carry up everybody. Let's right. go. I, I can, but I, I'm not. I'm more of like I like to capture the moment of how things are, the vibe. Right. And it's, it's usually a pretty good vibe. Well, see, and, and that's that's gets back into that thing where okay, so you saw success with that video. So now let's say you make another one of those videos and it was the quick rush and it you it was successful. Now you're gonna say, dang, what that mean every video gotta be like that. YouTube, yeah. they want you every video to be like that because they already like that because YouTube is YouTube is about making money. Not I'm talking about not us. I'm talking about YouTube, Google. Oh, they want to yeah, make, money. make money. So if they see you posting a video that's making them revenue, they're gonna push that type of video. And they know they that their algorithm that they have built and it's that computer learning. They know what you're saying in that video. They know how quick and fast the information is coming out. They know how people engage with that video. They know how long people watch that video. They know when people click off the video. They know when people fast forward. They have all those analytics, all those data points. So they know if you post a video that's very similar to this video where they made this amount of money and you post another video that's similar, they're going to push that video. And and it goes into that thing, that that kind of drug feeling like you're like, man, I can I can get the views if I post this type of video, but now you're getting into a repetition unless you really enjoy making those types of videos. But those yeah, quick I, videos I do people perform People want to, they'll stick to that. Like, oh, if this is working, I'm running with it, but I just can't. Like, I don't see myself like in a way being a poser. Like I'm not, if it happens that way, it happened naturally. Right. 
I, I'm not one that's going to repeat it just because even though uh, I don't know. What do y'all think in the chat? If it's doing that good, would you just go ahead and fake the funk and for the yeah. first few minutes? You're still going to enjoy it. It's not going to take away from a good time and finding some items. But would you try to continue with that first like intro type momentum of, of that video if it, if it was a catch, you know, really good views? Let so me know what y'all think. Or do you just be yourself and record as it is? Candid. That's what I like to say. That's it. Uh, like people, people love drama. That's that's correct. People do love drama, and you know, and and people they hate clickbait. They say they hate clickbait, but they love clickbait because clickbait videos perform the best, right? Those those are videos that that's why people do it because it performs the best. And you know, people complain about it because they're like, "Oh, that's a clickbait video." But would you have clicked on it if I really told you exactly what I was doing in this video? It's the same video, yeah. but. <laughs> if I if I told you like hey you know I went to the thrift store and I bought some stuff and I think I want to make you know five hundred dollars profit versus uh, the cashier you know wouldn't sell me this product because she was going to take it for myself yeah they're going to click on the video about the cashier because they want to see what the what the cashier was doing you know do you, and <laughs> do you ever see the comments where you might even got it yourself but somebody might leave a comment like. On this, on TJ's video at time marker five thirty six is where he says what he says in the, in the title. And oh yeah, because I've seen it and I'm like, well, that helped click, you know. <laughs> now I don't watch the five minutes and that's the view time that that I pretty much stole from somebody. If I was, oh, yeah. I've never done that, but um, yeah, it's I've had a a, a Walmart clearance video. And like I said, those warmer clearance videos, they just they just naturally they perform well. And uh, I had one one time. And like I said, you know, you take one moment out of that video and that's what your thumbnail is. That's what your title is. And I, I had bought um, it was these LOL surprise doll sets. And they're normally like one hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. Well, they had they was ringing up for eighteen dollars. So I went and I bought all of them. I went and I found an end cap and they was. They wasn't priced at $18, They but they was ringing up for $18. So I, I had a big old buggy piled up full of that, and I said, okay, that's the thumbnail because it's like a buggy with all these LOL dolls or whatever. So I go up to the front, and I start ringing them up, and the cashier came over to me, and she was like, uh, I think there's an error. I think those ain't those ain't ringing up right. And I said, no, they're ringing up for $18 <laughs> in my shoulder. And I hurry up and try to finish my transaction because I didn't want to take, I didn't want to take them from me. And uh. And and she and she said one quote. She said, um, "That's a hundred fifty dollars set." And that's what I put the, the quote of the video was that it was like that's a hundred fifty dollars set. And then of course I got them for for eighteen dollars. So that made people click on the video. Well, then people was like, "Well, where did the cashier say that? Where did the?" Ca and I was like, "Well, I, I wasn't recording the cashier when she said that. She said that to me, but I wasn't like recording her. You know, waiting on her to say like a sound bite for my caption. Like it, there's something that happened." And it made you click on the video and you got the, the what you wanted. You got to see what product I got for $18. You can go find it at your store. <laughs> you know I've um some of my titles. Well, let me let me ask you first before I get into <laughs> what I'm about to say. Have you ever say posted up a video and you look at it you, and then moments later, even the following day or a few days after you're like, I'm going to change the thumbnail and I'm going to change the title and I'm going to change hashtags. I never change. No, I, I don't. I, you know, I, April, sometimes my sister, she sometimes get kind of caught up in how the video is like performing. And man, when I push the, 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 uh, post button on that video, I'm thinking about the next video that I'm making. I'm not even thinking about that last video. I'm all, I'm thinking about how I'm gonna film the next video, or what my next topic is going to be, or what my next TikTok is going to be. Um, but like I said, I, I try to change and I try to do different things. So the information that I got in this last week about changing some of the thumbnails and some of the titles to get some of the old, the videos that's not performing well to get those to perform well, I, I'm going to try it. You know, I, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I shouldn't just post a video and, and move on to the next video. Maybe I should go back and change them. <laughs> What's up, Merchon? Got a Good. question here. I know Paul does. He changes them. He told me. <laughs> All right. Uh, how do you man. get subscribers? Yeah. How do you get subscribers? How do you recommend people should go about getting subscribers? I think that the biggest thing is that you can't focus on getting subscribers. You have to focus on what you enjoy making. So if you know it, it, whatever the the topic is, 
as long as it's something that you enjoy making and once you put it out, if it feels like a good product that you're putting out, you're going to get the subscribers because it's going to feel authentic. You know, I, I think people resonate with that and, and it's an unspoken thing. But, you know, when I watch a video of somebody that's passionate about something and I'll follow them just because I, they're passionate about it. Now I'm passionate about it. I'm like, why am I watching snake videos? I, I'm, I will never get a snake. But I watch people that are very passionate about snakes and reptiles and stuff like that. And when they make their videos, I'm like, man, I can get me a snake, even though I, I would never get a snake because they're scary. But um, if, if you're passionate about something and, and you want to make videos about that, just don't make it about getting views or getting subscribers or, you know, getting famous or whatever, wh whatever it is. Just, you know, make content that you're happy with and the subscribers will come. The videos that have performed the best for me are me talking about something that I am passionate about and I can sit there and babble on about it for two hours. You know, and, and those are the videos that perform the best for me. And like my the uh, I made a video a couple uh, weeks ago where I was talking about my analytics and I was looking at the video value versus views. And, and it's it's important for you to understand what's valuable to you if you're going to be a content creator, because if you're making videos just to get people to click on to get subscribers, um, people are going to see that they're going to see that you don't really like the topic that you're talking about. They're going to be asking you questions and you're not going to be able to answer them. Um, I, I I used to make tech reviews like cameras. I, people, companies, they send me all these cameras and um, lenses and microphones and stuff. And I used to do a lot of tech reviews. Well, I'm not a good tech reviewer. I'm not. I'm. I don't. I'm not. I don't know specs. I'm not going to go through and tell you how many nits a, a, a monitor is or anything like that. And it showed in my videos. It was a struggle to make them. I hated making those videos, but I had to because they sent me the product. And I'm like, well, I got to make a, a stupid review video now. Um, but I stopped making them because I hated making those those videos. I wasn't passionate about it, you know. But reselling, I can sit here and talk about it for five hours. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. <laughs> um, Zicket says they think they have six subs. Um, because of this comment, folks, on the video, not inside the chat, under the video uh, comments, if you are a content creator, let me know. And there, put the amount of subs you have. And what kind of content are you sharing? Um, one thing I ended up getting a comment or a reply back to was the whole um, getting monetized. YouTube's changing up their format on getting monetized. Really, they're just trying to push shorts in, in general because um, we kind of spoke about it earlier. You could get uh, 4,000 watch hours faster than 10 million um, views, in my opinion. Uh, some people it may be working and it's beneficial, but I ended up leaving a comment saying, um, I don't like that they change the standards only because the people like myself and the many other out there who have said, like, be consistent, keep doing what you're doing. The advice that TJ was giving earlier, we've done that and we did it. It's not impossible. And the reply that I got back from this person was, well, it would help me want to work harder if they monetize me right now that he's a gamer and it is hard for him because it is a small circle uh, that they have to support one another. And I thought a, a gamer in a small circle, uh, it might be a young kid, so I better watch how I'm talking. So <laughs> I looked at his channel and it's just video game playing. There's no introduction of who you are and I've been big on that lately. I feel like somewhere in your video, you should tell people who you are, what it is that you're doing, remind them, even though you're so say reselling myself, sourcing for something, I feel along the way is like, oh, I found something. And this is what I do. I do this because I work from home and this helps me live the lifestyle that I want to live working 18 hours a day. You know, like that's me. And people are like, you know what? 18 hours a day isn't bad when you hate working eight hours a day for somebody else under their rules, under their policies. But even though I'm working for myself, I still have guidelines I need to follow from other platforms like eBay and YouTube, you know, there's rules and regulations for everything. You just got to know how to make it beneficial towards you and keep just thriving forward. But looking at this person's video back to him, there was no intro. There was just gameplay. And it's like, I don't know who you are. So I'm not attached to you. You know, I might look at the game and be like, that's cool. But now I'm just waiting for you, like the storyline to go further in the game. And right. it's really just an advertisement. And I was like, yeah, that's probably why you're not getting these subscribers. So, what it what are what do you recommend people should do if they're not already whether they're veterans or not 
on how to, if they want to get subscribers, how do they go about it without asking or uh, I, subs? You, you know, I, I used to not give like that little blurb, you know, hey, hit the subscribe button. You know, it's like the YouTube thing. You're like, hey, hit the subscribe button. Because I feel like if if they like your content and they like your personality, they're going to hit it anyway. But sometimes you do have to remind them. You know, you do have to give them a little bit of reminder to say, I know you, you've been watching my videos for a little bit because you can see, you know, it, it shows you like uh, how many people are not subscribed and how many people mm -hmm. are subscribed. Um, so, you know, if you got 20 people that's subscribed watching 20% and then you got 80% that's not subscribed, but those 80% of people, you know, they, they may want to subscribe to your channel, but maybe they're watching on their TV. You know, now they have, you can actually subscribe from people's channel on, on your TV, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think YouTube is making it easier to subscribe, but also YouTube is going away from being subscriber based. Like even though they have subscribers, you don't have to be subscribed to a channel to to have your content served to 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 that audience. In mm. fact, if you want to grow, if you're you're looking for growth, you don't want to have 80% of your viewers to be your current subscribers. You want the 80% to be new subscribers because those are potential people that's going to actually subscribe to your channel and and grow your channel and get your numbers up because you know, like I said, if you're making videos and it's the same 80% of people watching your videos, they have already subscribed to your channel. So you're never going to grow. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I, I think the, the biggest thing is, you know, you know, if you're going to ask people to subscribe or just not, not ask people to subscribe, if you're going to remind them that there is a subscribe button. So if they would like to see your content, you know, just make sure that you don't do it at the very beginning of the video. The video I used to do it at the very beginning of the video. I start the video, I start talking. Hey, you know, hit the subscribe button. You know, hit the bell icon. Do all that kind of stuff. What you need to do is provide the value first. So tell them what your video is about, how you can help them, or you know what what your channel is all about. And then you know, if, if you like those things, you know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I you know I make videos and I'm, I upload videos twice a week or I upload videos once a week and you know I have new and exciting videos whatever you know just but you got to provide that value first so you give them the incentive, uh, you know, for clicking on that that subscribe button. You know, I'm pretty liberal with my subscribe button. I subscribe to anybody, you know, because like I said, I, I know YouTube is going to serve me videos of video uh, of things that I'm topics that I'm, you know, I'm watching. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to actually just go and and watch somebody's videos, I, had, I just have to go and look at my subscriber list. So there is a button on your YouTube thing where it shows only your subscribers and nobody. I don't, do you use that button on your YouTube uh, app? What's it called? It's a button that says subscribers and it shows all your subscribers videos. Yeah. OK, see, a lot of people don't even know that that button's there. So they go to their homepage and then that's what they watch the videos off of, you know, and, and I always said that if, if YouTube was really um, passionate about supporting a subscriber count, you know, you get the subscribers, you know, you get your subscriber awards. Then when you open up your YouTube account, it will show you your subscriber tab. It wouldn't go to the home page, but mm -hmm. it goes, it defaults to the home page, which doesn't necessarily have your subscribers on it. It has. Yeah, why do you want to watch your own home page? Right. There's, that's what they're they're promoting the home page. They're not promoting the subscriber tab. You have to go physically go to this button and push it to get to your subscribers. And sometimes I'll click over there and I say, oh, I forgot I subscribed to that channel because I had never I ain't seen the video from them since I subscribed to them. You know, so I, I think you know the subscribe button is not as as important as it used to be. But if you want to grow, you know, just make sure you provide that value first, and then and then say, hey, you know, you, if you like that that stuff I'm talking about, or if you like what I'm showing you right now, you know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because, you know, I post videos at this, this frequency or something like that. And I, I think you'll get more people click the, the subscribe button versus you start a video and you tell them, hey, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because they're like, you ain't even told me anything yet. Why am I hitting the subscribe button? I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> I feel like that goes along with Zicket's comment right here. Yeah. Uh, she's replying to Marie saying she was on vacation. Um, she thought she was in the UK, I believe. Uh, she lives in Vegas. I was a reseller from so on, so on. And that's what, and she wants to get back into reselling. I think that right there is what you should use. If you want to get into videos, let people know you got away from it and you're coming back into it. Mm -hmm. And if, if you have any suggestions, like you're like, you asked here, how do you get subscribers? Ask, like, if I see something in the background or something you're interested, that's one thing I've learned a lot from Danny, the niche lady and Mikey bags of money is that they say that in the videos. 
and it's it's not to copy them because it's the truth of what I want as well. Mm -hmm. Like if you see something and I get a lot of good tips from people and stuff that I didn't know about and I don't really get much negativity um, other than like my volume is too low or my volume is too high. And it's like, folks, I got ringing in the ear. I've had <laughs> an explosive ordinance blow up next to me, in front of me, over me, under me. Like sometimes my hearing's good. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> um, but it's just one of those things where it was like, it's, it's, it's my fault, but not entirely because it's I just technical, don't hear it's technical well. stuff. It's not your content. It's just technical. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it, it's, it's something that I asked my wife now. It's like, Hey, what do you think about this video? And she'll give it two seconds, like, oh, you got to wait till the rest of the video. But my wife doesn't even watch my videos, which is good, because if I was ever to talk about her, um, she, would, she wouldn't know. <laughs> she I could tell to y'all folks. It would be worth it to me. But one day she's going to end up being like, because her coworkers, she's a nurse, her coworkers sees my video. They they follow her, so they're nosy, and they're like, who's this guy, Sonny? <laughs> and a little thing about my wife's coworkers' friends, we met up a couple of years ago for one of her coworkers' friends' um wedding and all these people look so professional at this round table mm -hmm. uh, they set us all together and i happen to be the last one and the first guy was like i'm a dean at this school and the other one's like oh i'm retired marines and this like they're all these high uh accolades and i'm over here like when it got Nobody. to me they're like and hey, what do you do and i was like i'm a stay-at-home husband and they're <laughs> like their face just turned so pale and they were already fair skinned anyways and i was just like a laugh to myself it was a laugh and one of the ladies was like <laughs> <laughs> like gonna spit out her drink and i'm like yeah I, I was i was like i i was in the military two and a half years and i've done this and i'm reselling and i'm bike at the time i think i was a bike security officer and people look at me and they're like oh you're young you know like you're a punk and i was like no i'm not right not at all like i could be a punk but right <laughs> not like that and it's just i've learned like it doesn't matter what people think about you or what they've done they're gonna judge i know you what back. i've done and yeah. i know what i want to do and now they're at the end of that day though at that at that wedding they were all wanting me and carla to go to their houses like hey we need to have you all you're so much fun and y'all must have took dancing classes like no we just took some alcohol you know that was, that was a trick so that's always my trick alcohol loose enough for me not, right. not a drink if you don't drink or not into it um let me see what's going on here a little flicker a little flickering. Uh, 10 subs. I ran six recycled shorts in the past year. Reseller. One thing I've learned about reselling shorts is that you don't always have to be so direct into, hey, I found this. I went to the thrift store. Try to think the way you think when you see it and share that, like, that mindset. Because right. you'd be amazed how when you're free-minded that way of just being yourself, how much more it takes off with people. And I've I've had some videos where it's uh, the Marlboro hat. I had a corduroy Marlboro hat that I found, and in the in the caption, it was like one of my most geniuses titles. Even though I feel like I suck at them, I was like, <laughs> "Cigarettes are bad, but so is negativity." Comma ha, you know. And it was like people were like, "What is this?" You know, if the image didn't get them, if a reseller might see like, "Ooh, Marlboro, that's money," but then the caption is like, "Cigarettes bad." Right. And there might be people like, yeah, I've been smoking all my life and nothing happened. Like <laughs> it brings in a lot of people. Oh, yeah. It, it's got like 12,000 views. I made a whopping 45 cents off of that. So Did you? Yeah. Balling now. Balling. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of the most one where it's just like I wasn't thinking about anything other than just being myself and not what kind of caption should I have? You know, what kind of title should I do? Like I, trying I, to be more relaxed. Well, I, this um, I don't know if you follow. I, I don't know what his name is. Uh, he go his name on Instagram is Rewilded Reselling. Do you know him? No, I don't think so. Well, I I, I saw him. He popped up on on my page. Uh, I think he was probably posting some stuff. His name is uh Wyatt. Mm -hmm. Um, he went to the Hair Tornadoes um uh, event. Mm -hmm. And he was posting some some shorts or whatever, or some reels on on Instagram. And he posted one the other day, and I had never talked to this guy before, but I saw this one. And on the title of it says, you know, this one thing is missing is an eight iron. It, he was talking about uh, golf clubs, and he was like negotiating. He his style of video, you need to go follow him. I'm I'm gonna share one on Instagram. I'm gonna show you one of his videos because I like the way that he does his reselling videos. 
and apparently other people do too because he gets quite a bit of views mm-hmm. on his uh his reels and he's only got like 1400 followers on instagram what's it called his name is rewilded underscore reselling and he, he so he posted one the other day and what the the title of it was when he, when he came on there and started talking he was like uh you know, I was able to make a thousand dollars on this on these golf clubs in, in under three hours. And when I clicked on the video, it had he had just posted three hours ago. He had a hundred thousand views in three hours on Instagram, which is I've never seen that before. Like on even on my viral video, it didn't get no hundred thousand views in the first three hours when it was posted. And I took I put a comment down. I was like, I'm more uh uh I'm more impressed about just hundred thousand views in under three hours on the on the video. But I like the style of his 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 shorts. If you are doing like thrifting and stuff like that, I, I think that he he does provide you with with value, but it's also entertaining. It's it's not, you know, he don't take himself too seriously. And I think people resonate with that. You know, it's not like I'm just trying to tell you, hey, you need to go here and find this bolo, or you know, I bought this right here. It's kind of like braggy, you know. Some some stuff can come off like bragging when you're talking about, you know, you bought this for this much, you sold it for this much. But I, I like his flow of videos, and I think that's why his videos perform well with resellers because it's kind of like relatable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's see. I think that watch does matter. Credit goes into. Oh, oh yeah. How many channels are you sub to? How many hours are you on YouTube watching other content? Oh. I probably put in like three hours, like minimum. <laughs> minimum. <laughs> minimum. <laughs> and that that's before lunchtime. Um, and how much subbed? I don't I don't know how much people I'm sub to. I know well, I can't I can't keep up, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look and see how many because I don't know how many people I'm, I'm sub to in. Cause like I said, I'm very liberal with, with sub because I mean, hitting the subscribe button does do ap- does absolutely nothing for. <laughs> oh, it don't tell it won't tell you how many you subscribe. It's a I'm subscribed to a bunch. It's at least at least five hundred people. I bet you I'm subscribed to at least five hundred people, and they're all over the map. It's it's all kind of different channels that a lot of these channels. I bet you probably out of this five hundred people that I'm subscribed to, I bet you at least two hundred of them don't even make videos anymore. That's how yeah, long. there's been a few lately. I've been, I was looking at, and I was like, ah, oh, they don't even have stuff. Some I stayed subscribed to, and some I, I let go of. But I'm sure even even if you're not subscribed to people, if they come back, it's gonna pop up in your feed somehow, one way or another. Oh yeah, if like I said, if 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 it's a reseller and you talk about you you unsubscribe, if they post a video about reselling and that's what's in your topics up there, it'll pop back up on your page. <laughs> it's like it said. I spend my days, evenings, nights watching YouTube, and then Merch on says I watch way too much YouTube. I, I, I watch a lot of I watch more YouTube probably than okay. So I use I'm a big like TV. I like movies and stuff like that. I used to always be watching my my shows. I used to have my shows recording on my DVR. I don't even watch my DVR anymore. I literally come home in the evening and I will watch at least three to four hours of YouTube. Cause I got to catch up on like all my people, you know, I got like mm-hmm. certain people that you watch, you know, you got to catch up with what, what, you know, what they're doing. I watch my, it's three like uh reptile guys. I watch them with their snakes and stuff like that. And then I watch two Disney vloggers. I got to watch their videos and their videos about 25 minutes. Apiece. <laughs> so I got to watch both of those. And Do then I go to the reptile videos, like the snakes. Oh yeah. With, with this dark spirit in mind that you're <laughs> just waiting for one to get bit. You're like, I'm, I'm watching until what, one gets bit. It's one guy that I watch. His name is a Ch- Chandler. He is Ch- Chandler's wild world. He got actually just got bit by a uh, alligator and almost took his leg off. And he, he it's, it's pretty much healed now, but it, it, it was bad. It was a bad bite. He had gotten to like some dirty water. He couldn't see it. And it, it took him down and he he filmed all of it on, on YouTube, whatever. And it was big drama. You know, every every uh, little niche inside of YouTube, there's always some kind of drama going on with it. And uh it was drama behind that because everybody was like, Oh, he shouldn't have did that because now he's gonna make all the other uh reptile owners, they're gonna lose their licenses, and it was all kind of drama going on with it. Do but, those videos also um make you think about content to create as well? Like, oh, I could do something like that. I, you know what? <laughs> I watch also like fish video, and I, you know, like I got, I got fish. I got like three fish tanks, and 
I would I would entertain doing that. I wouldn't do it on my channel because even though I, I post pretty random stuff, I wouldn't go that. That's way outside of like the realm of what my channel is. You know, it's like me posting about reselling, about starting a business, about Instagram reels. Oh, I'm going to post some videos about my aquarium. <laughs> YouTube would be like, I'm shutting your channel down. You, you're, you're done. <laughs> it could be the, what is it, ASMR? It could. Yeah. <laughs> what well, uh, another thing I had been actually thinking about was um, starting a short cham channel, which now people are kind of, um, y you know, there was a big thing about YouTube shorts where at first, when they first put them out, it was messing up people's analytics because they was, if, if your short start, you know, doing well, well now your watch time is going down. Your average watch time for your whole channel is going down. Mm -hmm. And it was messing up people's like watch time on their long form videos. Well, then they cut the tie. So now your YouTube shorts and your long form videos don't interact with each other. So, you know, you, you would think that, you know, you post these shorts and people subscribe because they watch your shorts and then they're going to watch your long form video. Well, a lot of the people haven't been seeing that happen because it's two separate piles of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was thinking of starting a YouTube short channel because, you know, you can grow pretty, pretty quick with shorts. I think if you if you post something that because on shorts, shorts is a lot different than long form video on shorts. If I found something that worked really well, I will post a lot of that. You know, if you if we're talking about growth, because it's, it's a short video, it's we're talking about a 20 second video, a, a mm -hmm. 30 second video. It's not me making a 25 minute long video about something I hate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like on my pallet jacking tiktok page we was doing the walmart clearance stuff like i said walmart clearances get views well we got like one video had like 2.2 million views uh which the most views we ever had on like a tiktok at that time and uh i was like well shoot we can just pump out these walmart clearance videos because they're like nine seconds long you know but it's just it, it's, it's still not fun to me when i when i get into that that repetitious you know keep making the same old same old have you found an easy way to create shorts from, say, your videos that you make? Are your shorts completely different editing and footage than your content? Um, normally, if I take a long, uh, a long form video and I create it into a short, you could do it in CapCut. I could do it in CapCut. It's, it's easier for me to to do it on the computer. So what I do on the computer is I'll. Um, open. I, I use uh, Final Cut Pro um, to edit my videos, and so what I do is I open it up in in uh, vertical video, and then I'll just expand it to where it fills the whole screen. Because you know Instagram, they don't like borders. So if you post a video that's got borders on it, they go, you know, they're not gonna post it. They're gonna show it to a bunch of people. Um, but I'll go in and I'll I'll just cut it based on like telling the story. So if we're doing like an unboxing, you know, we may have five or six moments that was funny or something like that. And I'll just take those five or six moments and those are the shorts, you know, it's just those moments from that long form video. So you can get five or six pieces of content from one video, one long form video and post those on all your different social media platforms. And I always tell people post all of your short videos on all of the platforms, post them on Instagram, post them on TikTok, post them mm -hmm. on YouTube. Even if you got a YouTube channel with the same video, still post them on shorts because it's going to a whole different audience of people. Do you share any of like your YouTube videos on Facebook, but not like YouTube wise? Like it's set on there. Um, hold on, do I what now? Like your YouTube videos? Yeah. And rather than just sharing a link on on Facebook, do you share an actual like long form uh, video on Facebook? I normally I, I don't share a. I won't share the video. Like I won't just share the video file. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll share the the YouTube link, mm -hmm. and that I don't think that's a good thing to do because Facebook does not want people from Facebook to click on the YouTube link and go to YouTube and watch YouTube videos. So those video those links aren't going to perform well. So the proper way to do it is to to upload the whole video mm -hmm. or a snippet of the video, and you know if they want to see the rest of it, they have to go to YouTube to see the long term long form video but um i can't stand those videos when it's like you're into it and it's and like, you oh you gotta go over here to see the rest it's like oh. yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, that, it, the, people do that because like if you post, if you just share, um, and I'm sure it's the same with Instagram. I, I I share my link on like my stories. You'll see them on my stories. Like I post like you know I just upload this video and I put a link to it. You know those if you go look at the analytics of those stories, they don't normally those stories don't perform as well as some of your other videos because Instagram don't want you to nobody to click on that link and go start watching YouTube videos for an hour. You know, or TikTok. They don't want you. They don't want people to go on over to TikTok and scrolling through for an hour. So they won't show those those posts to a lot of people. But if you post a reel that is of a snippet of your YouTube video, and then at the end of that reel, it's got a thing saying "Watch the rest of it on YouTube." You know, then it's going to get the organic growth from Instagram, and then also people may go and click on your <laughs> link. But people don't like doing extra stuff either. Wait, so we did a skit like this, right? <laughs> I mean, that's why I was, yeah, I was like, I was just thinking of that. Familiar? <laughs> oh man, folks! Yeah, if you're not following TJ, I have him on here, so you should. Um, but the stuff that he makes is very um, true to me. Um, especially, you just got to see his videos. Um, but let's talk about eBay Society. Uh oh. <laughs> Where did where did eBay society come from? And just throw up some emojis if you if you've ever heard of the eBay society. It's pretty intense. You know, I, I'm gonna tell you where that came from. So I was born in I was born in in the late '80s, so '86, right? And when I grew up, we had the Midnight Society, which was Are You Afraid of the Dark? You ever seen that show before? Yeah. So that's that's where that came from, and. Uh, me and my sister was sitting talking one day and I was like, April, we got to do like a, um, I like doing a Halloween special and I also like doing a Christmas special. So my Christmas special was more like heartfelt. It was, it was like a heartfelt type of thing. And I said, well, this, uh, Halloween story, I want to be kind of scary, but I wanted to, I want to be related to, to reselling. And so I, I pitched the idea. I think we was on a live talking about it. And, um, one of my subscribers actually sent me the intro for that video he he made like this uh i don't know if you remember like the it was a guy talking and he was um it was like a kind of scary kind of talk and that was one of the subscribers they actually sent me that on on facebook and i said this is perfect and so based on that intro that's why uh, where that video came from but uh i don't know ebay society just seemed like that would be a thing that that they were like a cult <laughs> you got to be in like a cult to get uh that's a bunch of people on like. ebay <laughs> It, it captured it pretty good. Um, you have it on your pallet jacking liquidation page, right? I do. Yeah, I had a, the full video is on uh, is on on my pallet jacking page. I'm trying to find it, but it's not letting me see it now. Yes, it's it's on there somewhere. It, it, it was the first thing that popped up when I was on it last night. I forget. I forget what. Uh, it was like. Um, ah, what did I name that one? It was. I'm gonna put pallet jacking Halloween. Media, because uh, I think we're gonna play it if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm, I, for some reason, I can't find it. Oh, Tales from eBay. That's what that was the name of it. <laughs> kind of like see. Tales from the Crypt. It's a really good little short, um, scary Tales from eBay. All right, I think I got it up here, folks. Well, see, gonna, I think the, the one on YouTube is like the longest. It's the long version. It's a movie. It's like eleven minutes long. <laughs> the one on YouTube. The one on YouTube. Yeah, it's 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 the long. It's a it's a movie. <laughs> I, I thought this one was like eleven minutes long too. Oh, it may, it may it may I may have posted the whole thing on Facebook. I can't remember. Folks, we're gonna we're gonna watch this. Uh, I was intrigued by it. I hope you like it. This is gonna be. Um, this is really something I was thinking like TJ and April and. Whoever else was involved should like keep doing videos like this, but it does take a while to do, um, which is why I wouldn't put pressure on them. Like you need to do this, but I think these type of things are things I've been wanting to work on myself, but it's just trying to find people to help me. Cause it's always different when recording yourself to people oh, yeah. recording you and, and going through the whole storyboard and content. It's a lot of work that goes to creating like this type of content. Um, let me see, share screen. The biggest thing is your storyboard. That's that makes it easier. If you, you make your storyboard and then you just say, okay, I gotta get this shot, I gotta get this shot. That's that's how I normally do it. 
All right, stand by, folks. We're gonna we're gonna watch this. Oh, there it is. How do I get? My my inner this is what I was afraid of. I don't want my internet kicking me off. <laughs> so he's doing too much. <laughs> oh. But we'll, we'll keep we'll keep that vote for this person. I can't stand when there's election times and then everybody's downing everybody. It's like I haven't even heard from y'all since until election time comes up. Right. <laughs> All right, folks. Got some little free previews right here. We go skip. Skip. Oh, see, it's like a movie. Look at that. <laughs> Jeff, he was good with that voiceover. <laughs> yeah. That had me rolling. Oh, Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> what is this? eBay society. Stupid returns. <laughs> Stupid returns. Tomorrow. Oh shoot, April, I got another call coming in. I'll call you right back. Okay. All right. All right. Hello? Have you no patience? Who is this? <laughs> I am a message. It's time you realize your full potential. The eBay Society awaits you. eBay Society. I think you have the wrong number. <laughs> Who is? <laughs> Hello? Anyway. Life drone footage right there, too. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot! I left my mask at the store. Turn back around and go over there. It's like one of those cheesy like uh horror films where they go and it's like a slasher film. <laughs> yeah, I was like that's what I was going, that's what I was going for. I was like Tuesday in April, they got a permit to block off all the traffic. <laughs> the eBay society tomorrow. I don't know what that means. I think I late. The movie didn't take that long to film. I think we filmed all this in one day. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
eBay Society. I got this from a movie. Where it's like you looking at the screen is looking at you and you see like the reverse of it. Yeah, I liked it when you did that. I was like, ooh, how do you do that? <laughs> I'm not dealing with this today. I'm going to bed. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? Oh, hey, come on in. Dude, <laughs> this studio is so <laughs> sick. I mean, I'm literally freaking out right now. I've always wanted a studio, but I've, I've just never been able to get one. Never been able to do it. I can't do it. Uh, I know how it is. Yeah, so I was going to ask you if you want to come over here tomorrow night. We're having like a barbecue get together. Uh, it's me, April, and uh, you. If you want to come along, we're going to throw some steaks on the grill. And uh, we've got like, we've got this thing that we're going to try. Like the eBay Society. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's got like a little post it note on it. And I went and did some research about it. But yeah, you want to come over? Sure, man. I've been wanting to get back into resale for so long, but my wife, she thinks she's a TikTok influencer. She's always in there like, hey, look at me. I can do a dance. <laughs> anyway, I love to come. That'll work. Unfortunately, my wife, she won't be able to make it, but yeah, I'll be there. Do I need to bring anything? No, no. Just bring yourself. Sweet. All right, you have a good night, man. Thanks, man. Oh, oh. And by the way, I missed that night. I saw this weird guy in your yard. He had on like a red bathrobe. I don't know what that was all about. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, you may want to check that out. <laughs> I gotta tell you, a weird guy in the yard. <laughs> it's so late. He could have been dead already. I know it. <laughs> you don't say that when you see it. <laughs> What's up, Quillen? I don't know where I got the story from. The, the story I'm about to tell, I made it up. Oh, yeah, that's what I, I told you that. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I don't know where April is. She called. That's, that's hilarious. Yeah, I don't know where April is. So, like, dude, what's the eBay Society? I don't even know what that is. The way it was explained to me is that there's so many horror stories about eBay and, and reselling and uh -huh. stuff like that. So, you know, they create this society. Uh -huh. and to, These are know, California, they guys. Story. Yeah. Um, and then once you tell your creepy story, if you get somebody like freaked out, then you're in. Oh, oh, totally, dude. All right. Dude, that fire is feeling so amazing. Yeah, it's nice and warm. It's getting cold out here. All right, I'm ready, man. Let's go. So I think I've got a pretty good story I'm gonna tell. Let's go. <laughs> this is from Joey by the Bean Twenty Two. <laughs> yeah. and I were kids. Our family lived for a while in this charming old farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners, climbing the apple tree in the backyard. But our favorite thing was the ghost we would see. We called her mother because she seemed so kind and so nurturing. <laughs> Some morning. <laughs> April and I would wake up. No, dude. And on each of our nightstands was a cup. The cup wasn't there the night before. Mother had left them there for us, worrying that we may get thirsty or something through the night. She just wanted to take care of us. In the house, there was furniture that was left by the previous owners, an antique wooden chair. And we kept that chair up against the back wall of the living room. Sometimes when we were preoccupied watching TV or playing a game, mother would inch that chair closer to the center of the room, inch by inch, closer and closer. That's from Lucy. I love Sometimes Lucy. To get it all the way to the center of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall because she just wanted to be near us. Years later, long after we moved out, we found an old news article about the farmhouse's old owners, a widow. She murdered her two kids, each with a cup of 
poison milk before bed. Then she hung herself. The article included a photo of Farmhouse's living room. In the center of it was a woman hanging with a chair beneath her. In the center of the room. Who's there? <laughs> Who's there? Dude, that is so freaking scary. Let's go. <laughs> no, really. No, 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 seriously. That that freaks me out. Let, let's go. Let's, let's go. Maybe that's, is that April? Who is that? The day has come. We have been inducted into the Amy Society. Now, for yourselves. <laughs> Imagine my neighbors when they're looking outside and I'm on the porch with them. <laughs> that was awesome. I got a scary idea for for this this uh this Halloween one. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like real it's gonna be no comedy and it's gonna be one hundred percent like scary. I got I already got my idea. I got it last year. I, I kind of drafted it out, but I, I still gotta film it. But it's gonna be like a scary, scary one. Uh that that was yeah, that was amazing. When I was watching that last night, and I'm one where I was laughing at my wife because she was watching some weird show on TikTok the night before, but it was like bizarre, eerie, and she woke up this morning saying, or yesterday saying, uh, man, I couldn't go to sleep last night because of that show. And then last night I was watching that, and I was like, yeah, that's probably going to be me tonight. But <laughs> it was really good. What did y'all think, people? What did y'all think of that uh, little short film? To me, it's Sundance worthy. Really, it is. I, I think it should be like plugged in for it. I'm actually surprised that April, because April is like the worst with laughing. She she, she never takes anything seriously. And me, I can, you know, I can laugh and talk. But if I'm like about to film something, I can jump back into it and, and deliver, you know, make a line. But <laughs> there was a part at the beginning of it when uh, I was talking to her and I had my beard on and she could not stop laughing at that part. <laughs> <laughs> I kept telling her, like, if you just got to say one little small, all you got to do is grab the package and, and say yeah. things. That's all you got to do. Uh, ladies nice. and gents, we'll, we'll, we'll come in. Um, had a little short video there to share with y'all. I thought it was pretty awesome and wanted to share it. And I was hoping TJ was all right with it. And then he was, oh, thankfully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Kathy. You got Kathy in the house. Got the fabulous Jennifer Hayes. We got the hey, fabulous blue-eyed, blonde-haired, parted hair, Paul Philly flipper. <laughs> um, DJ was talking about you earlier. It was. Um, it was good. It's all good stuff. Uh, you're not supposed to tell them it was good, so that way oh, they go back and help me with the watch time. It's all bad, sorry. Yeah, go back and look at it. Horrible. See what I see. It. <laughs> it was probably bad because I didn't stand up for him. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yvonne, hello, Yvonne. I sent out um, the records. Had a auction last night with Kelly Reseller Luis. Uh, did pretty good uh, for the few items that I had posted up, and I mailed it all off today. Do you do do you do, you do uh, the auctions on YouTube? No, um, unless it's on his. He he invited me to go on, and I think this okay. is like my third time. Okay, and just cool, cool to hang yeah. out with you know your peeps. Got a got compliments, awesomeness. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Kathy, YouTube star. So you can be in the next. I, I really wanted to really get into a, a lot of uh, resellers. They don't really, that I see. I don't see a lot of collaboration with the uh, with the shorts and stuff. And I think there's a, a opportunity to like collaborate on shorts and stuff. So we, we're going to have to like collaborate on some shorts or some reels or some TikToks or something. Um, there, there's an idea that I bring up. I have a premiere tomorrow, folks. I have tried to have, I, I missed out this week went by so fast. I didn't realize Tuesday was Tuesday. I thought it was like Sunday. I was like, all right, I got a day. I have a video <laughs> day. And I was like, Oh crap. I don't have a video, which I usually have them on Tuesday. So I put it for tomorrow. But when I was with Mikey, um, something that's been in my head and I try to do, um, at one of the flea markets. And it's called uh, phone a friend. So when you're out reselling, you ever or wherever you're at, you could be looking at just something. You're like, man, I know some one of my friends that could help me 
and I'm going to call them up and ask them. And I was like, maybe I could start doing that in YouTube videos. So yep. that's what I brought up in tomorrow's video. And I'm going to reach out to like Derek and Jasmine, um, see if I could get their number. If they trust me to have it, I won't give it out. <laughs> um, but I think it would be cool to collaborate that way as well as like, hey, phone a friend. Yeah. You know, it's always one of those things. They may answer. They may not. Yeah. Carrie, who's not a YouTuber, but she's in YouTube videos on on mine, Mikey Bags of Money, uh, the niche lady. She she's with the niche lady often. They go sourcing and she's very experienced. And some of the things that I was looking at, she loves. And I was trying to call her, but she didn't answer. But I also wasn't recording. I thought I was. I must have hit it twice. So I was excited to share that, like phone a friend. And then I had to wait until I actually made sure I was recording when yeah. I was talking to Mikey when it popped in my head again. So I'm going to start implementing stuff like that. And it's just things uh, trying to step outside of the norm of like, why can I not do this? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Try. I mean, try try anything because you, you never know, like I said, what what people, what other people are going to, you can't anticipate what other people are going to like, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times the only person that sabotages it, it, us is ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not the people, it's, it's, a, it's us and our minds. So yeah, definitely try it. And <clears throat> I think the, the collaboration thing, like people, you know, you got all these different people. There's a lot of people that watch reselling videos that aren't resellers. You know, they just look at it for the entertainment uh, factor and, they probably don't even know that these other channels exist. You know, they don't even know, you know, uh, I don't go on a lot of people's lives and stuff like that. You know, I'm in like the chats and stuff, but in terms of like going on camera to a lot of people's lives, I, I don't necessarily do. And, um, and so when I go on people's lives, they're like, Hey, T I didn't even know you existed. I'm like, no, you didn't. Cause I, I don't really get out there like that. You know, I just post some videos and I know what you're saying, but thanks. <laughs> you, you bum. <laughs> Kathy said she had to pull over to watch. It was that good. I oh, appreciate rewarding. that. Nice. Yeah, you definitely won't don't want to be driving watching that stuff. No, oh, you'd be scared. What's up, Biscuit <laughs> Butt? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> eh, it was going <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect you to. <laughs> it would be a great series. Yeah, it would. He did it in a day, but on top of the stuff that he already got going on and having other people involved. That's one of the tricky parts of trying to network with people is not always as easy as like, hey, let's meet up. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, I got something planned. And you don't always know people's stuff, which is one thing I've been thinking about YouTube, too. Like, rather than having an alert that pops up, because people are very, they want to be aware of what's going on, not so much nosy. Right. I'm not trying to say it that way because that comes off a little mean. <laughs> but what if YouTube had like, your own calendar of like when your videos come out in time that somebody oh, yeah. could go to your homepage and be like, what's his calendar look like? Oh, yeah. he's scratched that out because he's changing. Something's going on like little footnotes, yeah. you know, and, and do it that way. I just think of those yeah, little yeah. there's some opportunity. So like, I, you know, like I said, I'm a corporate guy, so I live on the calendar and, and, and outlook. That's how I'm, I, I go in there and I, when I'm scheduling my meetings and my time, all my, my whole day is like scheduled out with all the stuff I got to do during the day. So um, I try to, a lot of times when I'm trying to do things, it's hard for me to schedule that stuff out. Cause when I come home, it's not scheduled. It's just, you know, either can do it or I can't. <laughs> you know what? So a lot of times people ask me like, Hey, we jump on a live or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but as long as it's not my, during my work hours, of course, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. That was a really good video put together. I appreciate that. It really was. I'm, I'm I'm telling you, my next one's gonna be scary. You're gonna be scared. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for horror. <laughs> I think you should also submit some of your stuff to Sundance. I could because they, they do Sundance. Um, Sundance. What I learned in college, uh, be, being uh, going for a digital media background, not just for um, 2D, 3D animation, but videography as well. So some of that stuff, our instructors are always encouraging, like, "Hey, you should work on this." Yeah. And the exposure you could you could get, and even just working with people, like it could go a long way, and it all adds up because you network and you get a foot in the door. Oh, yeah. But with that video alone, I was just like, "This is Sundance material. Like this is my type of Sundance." That I'm oh like, yeah, I like. But there's some Sundance people that submit their work, and it's like, nah, <laughs> like nah, not not for me. But it was really good. Like the editing, the quality of the video, even like the color scheme of it. I was like, "Ooh, that's really really nice." 
appreciate that. I got my so my Christmas video. Um, I wanted to make it very like personal because I, I don't know if you know like my story about my parents, but you know my, both my parents passed away of cancer, mm. and Sorry, my, I appreciate that. My 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 dad was. I get cameras and stuff from my dad, you know, not even thinking about it. He always used to have like a camcorder. So I got like all this footage from me and my sister when we was like younger, just on VHS tapes. And so I was like, man, I want to incorporate that. Uh, Cause both, they, they both passed away in December, like right around Christmas. Mom passed away on the 19th. And my dad passed away on the 28th. So I was like, I want to do something really good, really nice for Christmas, um, a video. And so what I did was I said, I was going to do uh, me and my sister. We love Christmas. We love Christmas songs. And so I said, April, you pick, we're going to pick like five of our favorite Christmas songs and, you know, there, no YouTube revenue because I'm putting all these Christmas songs on this video and it's, it's, it's it, we're going to get copyright claims on it, whatever, I don't care. So what I did was I found those VHS tapes, I found a VHS player and I was able to hook it up to my MacBook and I s recorded all the videos to digital oh, files wow. on my computer and I spliced those into the video. So like if you go look at that video, it's got like me and April when we were like playing in the snow in like 1994 and me and April, we was in, uh, I think we went down to Alabama to the, uh, to the NASA center and stuff like that. You know, I, I just want to be like more of a personal thing. And I kind of really talked about, uh, during that video, I talked about our story, like, cause a lot of people hadn't seen, you know, they, they don't know our story other than me, like mentioning it on, uh, on, on YouTube, on, on lives and stuff. But I, I just gave him like the story of what happened and what Christmas mean to me. And I put all of our favorite Christmas songs. This is it's like a real personal, uh, mm. uh, type, you know, type of video, or whatever, just to kind of get a, a layer, a, a little bit deeper level. <laughs> Take that layers off the onions. Make people <laughs> cry. Oh, I know it. I know. <laughs> Paul said, did a phone, a friend video way back. See, I don't want to make it like a whole video. It's just, in the video, when I come across something, if it happens, I'm not going to plan it. I'm just, the answer they do. If they don't, they don't. If they know about it, they do. You know, just one of those things where it's like, it's not only just, it's a way of networking without the person having to be there in person too. You know, oh, yeah. even, even just the moment might help somebody have other people, you know, go support. And that's what it comes down to, I guess, just supporting one another, getting getting people involved. Yeah. Anytime you can throw, throw, you know, throw somebody else's name out there. That's what I'm talking about. I appreciate yeah, that. Don't throw shade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had Ella um, save here first. I've had her in a couple of videos, like in some of my little skits that I do. I'll, I, I, I had a whole series, and I used to make my. I kind of stopped making them, but at the beginning of my videos on Pallet Jack, and I, we had like a whole series of stuff happening. Like there was a. Um, we uh, had Pallet Jack and Studios and somebody was trying to infiltrate the Pallet Jack and Studios and they had put in like a secret elixir and it was this uh, flamingo. Uh, you see me with that flamingo every now and again because when we used to do lives, we had this flamingo we found in one of our boxes and somebody, they named it Izzy. So I had that flamingo and it was the juice and I had to go find like this neon, like the the juice, the, um, you know, you make those neon yeah. lights, you crack it. I had that juice and I put it in like a, a little vial and that was the elixir. And it was like a whole long, it went on like for like 10 videos, but it was a snippet of it every, the beginning of like every video for like 10 videos or something like that. And people, they, they, they pretty much liked it. And I got, I think I got all the way to the part where there was, uh, uh, I had to call somebody from like, uh, they was like off planet. <laughs> and I had to call them from off planet and they flew out and they was coming to go battle this person. And we was it we was in space. It was all kind of stuff that was going on with it. <laughs> in space. Oh yeah. It was it was it, it was, was uh, it was it was galactic. Inter uh, intergalactic. Intergalactic reseller <laughs> pallet jacking over here. Yeah. But that's fun when people could be creative and mesh what they're doing, you know? Have oh, a yeah. be themselves. And that, oh, yeah. that's one thing I'm I'm learning more and more of just relaxing. And I'm even though I I got out the military back in 2011. Like I'm still transitioning into a civilian. So a lot of things is like, you don't do that. You don't get close to me. You don't bump me without expecting me to do something about it. Um, like that's me, but learning more how to be a civilian is like, you're not worth it. Yeah, you know, A lot more could be taken away from me um, being a civilian. So I really watch it, especially my future and things I like to do. Yeah. People that I like to be involved with talking about that's what it's all about um question and they, i meant to get to this earlier uh what kind of camera what kind of stuff are you using for it to be so crispy so 
I was very when me and April started doing live video. We did the first live on my iMac in my my office over here, and I didn't like the way the the video footage looked. You know, I didn't like the way it looked. So I was like, there's people that I see do lives and they have crispy video and they have crispy audio. I want that. Whatever that is, that's what I'm going to get. So what I did was I got um, I got a bunch of these expensive cameras. Like I got this is a Sony A7S III. So this is my main camera that I film with. Well, my old camera, which is a Sony A7R III, is what I'm doing uh, the video with. So what I did was I got one of these. I got these everywhere. This is a Cam Link 4K. So you get this little thing right here, oh, and it's got a HDMI cable. It's got a USB cable. You plug that into your computer, and you can plug in your camera to this. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. I just haven't put it. It's been like a year since you I've need had to it. put it. What are you waiting on? You put that in, and then <laughs> put this I, right on the top. And 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 that's it. This is your 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 big camera, and and you get this. This is what you get. You get this. I mean. It's, I mean, it's a four thousand dollar camera, so it's gonna it better look good. <laughs> Mine's not a four thousand dollar camera; it's more like a nine hundred. It's this. It, it's the same. <laughs> it's a DSLR. That's what it comes it, down. To. It, as long as it's DSLR, you got the pixels, the megapixels. That one's. This one's got like forty eight megapixels. Um, this one's a little bit less, but this one's better because it's it's the newer one, so it's got the better frame rates and stuff like that. But, um, and then I got. I mean. It's, uh, Camera gear is expensive. It's, I mean, I go through and I, oh, yeah, see, we did. I, 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 I paired them up. <laughs> um, The lens, I bought this lens. I never thought I'd pay like $1,200. I paid $1,200 for this lens that I got on this camera right now, but it's a zoom lens. So um, I got really off into photography and videography when I started YouTube. And so like all these lenses with the different focal lengths, like this is a, um, this is a 35 millimeter, but that one I got on there now is a um, it's an 18 to 50 millimeter and it's a prime lens all the way through. So I can zoom in to 18 millimeters and I can go all the way out to 50 millimeters. And it's like me having multiples of these lenses. That's why I paid twelve hundred dollars for it. But it looks really good. You can zoom in, zoom out and it's always it always looks good. And then my um, audio I got this Rode Caster Pro, which is like a soundboard, and um, and I got these Rode microphones. I got two Rode. Actually, I got a new Rode microphone. This one, this is one that I haven't started using yeah, yet. Seen, because I thought I seen that in one of your videos. Yeah, I, I I I've been using it on my my videos, but I I haven't tweaked the sound yet. It's not. It doesn't sound as great as I would like it to to sound. So I got that's why I put it over there on the side. But uh, yeah, and then just plug it to my computer, and this is when I. It's an easy setup. I literally just turn the camera on, and I've got a battery in there that's plugged into my AC power, so I, I don't have to worry about the battery dying because it's just plugged in. And it's just a studio. This is a studio. It's, I got a setup where it's easy. I want it to be easy and efficient when I come down here and film. See, I get this stuff. I just don't end up using it like a sewing machine. <laughs> I got a sublimation machine. <laughs> like I get do this you do stuff, sublimation? Like, I it, and then I don't use it. Like It's just... Editing was one thing that has was kicking my butt. Yeah. Now, because editing was kicking my butt, it took me away from uh, organizing as much as I used to. Now it's like, oh man, I'm doing, I'm, I'm shopping not as much, but I need to catch up on on this stuff. And I'm waking up earlier now, but I'm also exercising and dealing with stuff with the hospital back and forth. Me and wife trying to have kids, so it's like a lot of those things are pulling me away from this yeah you know, your stuff. Their priority All right so eventually i'll get to it you, so you have, do you sublimate is that your i you see you see my other studio right my my 3d printing studio you told me you said it earlier but i haven't seen it oh i've got i've, I've got a sublimation uh printer i got i bought an et the 15,000, you know the wide format printer i made that one is uh what they call eco solvent and mm -hmm. then i've got another uh eco tank printer for my sublimation and then i've got another printer that's just a regular printer and then i bought the wide the one that prints uh it cuts a cutting machine like that goes all the way up to like 36 it's it's the big one the vinyl plotter or yes yeah the vinyl cutter and then uh i've got my cricket machine and i've made zero shirts but i got all this stuff <laughs> i got it set up it's all set i can go in there and do it right now if i wanted to i got a heat <laughs> press i got a heat press I got three uh, 3D printing machines over there, and I do 3D print quite a bit of 
uh, stuff in, in, in my little 3D printing studio. But do you just do it for yourself or do you do um like is that a hustle on the side as well? I, so I, I always think of like uh, in goal, some kind of way to incorporate it into some kind of business. But when I started making those shirts, I cannot I can I couldn't do that. I could not make shirts on a massive scale. It's it's tough. You go in there, you start printing that stuff. Sublimation is pretty easy because you don't have to cut it. You know, it, it prints out and it just, you know, it's like the gas transfer that goes to your uh, shirt or whatever. But um, it's it's hard. It's, it takes like a lot of time. Like you have to be dedicated to do that. I would have to stop doing a lot of stuff if I wanted to do, you know, like an Etsy shop or something with, with shirts or whatever. So most of the time what I do is I like designing shirts. Like I like graphic tees. I, I wear a lot of graphic tees and um, instead of me buying them, I can make them and wear them in my videos. Cause that's just one thing I always have like a different graphic tee in, in my videos. And uh, instead of me buying them, I just, you know, I go make them on my, my printer and then I print them off and I burn them onto a shirt. <laughs> Literally burn them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah burn them. Cause <laughs> most of the time I don't know how long you're supposed to leave it down. <laughs> they have like a ring around it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the thing with, um, the heat press and stuff. I I got off of my all my stuff off. Well, the heat press, hat press, and the flat one for the shirts. I got that off of offer up for think, a pretty good price. But the hat press, it doesn't adjust the heat. Like the knob's gone. Oh so really? I get pliers and turn it. The other day, I was like, "What's this knob?" You know. <laughs> and I touched it and it was like stung my fingers. I was like, "Oh my god!" No wonder I got it for so cheap. Like this thing's like defective. I, but it's I, like a four hundred dollar hat press. I bought one off of, off of Amazon too. I got one of those too. I got the whole. I'm saying I got the whole gamut. So I see a YouTube video. I'm like, oh, I can do that. Yeah, <laughs> and you can. It's. One. I like it because it's, it's. I'm at the end of this month. I'm gonna make a Shopify website, and I would just want to have some of the shirts that I've thrifted or mm -hmm. came across and bundles that I feel they're cool shirts, and you know, put my logo on it. And people are interested. I just haven't put it together only because other things, but. Yeah. Then hats too. Um, I could make hats. Nothing crazy, but I would like to get into getting like sublimation pieces yeah. where you don't have to press it. I just need it for me to press it. You know, I don't right. know if you're able to do that, but if you are, let me know. Yeah. It, well, the the biggest thing the biggest thing is is if you're going to launch a line like that is to have a set amount. This this is how I would do it now. Just thinking about the process, like I would make fifty of them, and I would say fifty these fifty are available. And then that way you can allot however much time it's going to take to make those 50 versus you say, okay, you can order these and then you get 20 orders today and then you get 30 orders tomorrow and then you get 50 orders the next day. <laughs> then you're like, oh my God, I ain't going to be able to make all this stuff. That's how, how I would do it. I would, I would have a set amount and say, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to make 50 of these and 50 of them are available, you know. And I'll so end up selling like two, one of myself. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I'll like force my my wife to buy one. Yeah, going, but, uh, going people have been asking. Movies. I just I just haven't pulled the trigger yet, only because I don't want to feel overwhelmed like I did in the past. I was trying to do too much at once. Yeah, and now it's like okay, YouTube because I do want to be a YouTuber, like a full time YouTuber. Yeah, but I also wouldn't take away from reselling. You know, it, you don't need to be one or the other. I want to be both. Yeah, you. And I, I want to have that to be successful. Like I told people to have my wife jump on YouTube and do what she used to do. And she was really good. Um, yeah. Really good editing too. Kicks my butt every time. And I tell people this about her. She didn't even go to school for it. She went for her nursing, but her editing skills kicks my butt. <laughs> like it's something about, I'm going to stereotype women. They just have a better mindset and patience to get things rather than me being a guy. I'm like, I just, I just put it together, you know, but now I'm like, no, I need to do it right. If I want to grow, I can't half-ass it. It's 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 about people notice the details. They may not comment on the details, but they notice the details. So when you leave in that extra frame that you were supposed to take out, or that extra space of time where you didn't edit that out, people people see that. So they notice when you make it, you know, make it flawless. And I'll I'll normally I'll watch my videos all the way through from the beginning to end before I post it because I've had too many times where I posted a video and then. I go back and watch it because, like I said, I go through and watch all my videos. I post a video and I look at it and I say, oh, I didn't put the, I didn't, you know, I left something in there or I said something at the end that I wasn't supposed to say or one of the titles was messed up. It was an error on the screen, you know, and then I have to delete the video and then people already watched it and then it messes up the whole, you know, algorithm. And um, I, I heard a quote 
or somebody said one day, and I always kept this in my mind: if you can't sit and watch your own video all the way through, how do you expect anybody else to sit there and watch the whole video all the way through? So I always watch my video all the way through just to make sure it looks good, it sounds good, and I critique myself, and then I go back and you know edit. Sometimes I go back and edit stuff down. I say, well, I was uh, harping on this subject for five minutes, and it I really could have talked about it in two minutes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, I, I, I feel like when I actually watch it through, I've already watched it like two or three times, maybe yeah. even four, until it's like, okay, it's done. Yeah. Now I'm going to watch it from beginning to end without stopping. Yeah. You know, and for the most part, I, I'm learning. So. Yeah. Because I know I used to record just too much, too much footage that I didn't need to. Yeah. And then it's like, why am I editing this? I don't need it. So it's taking away time. So now what I learned from the niche lady is like when she sees something, she tries to capture the moment. Mm-hmm. But only talk about that. Right. You, know, you might capture some other stuff if you're already recording and somebody's talking and you could be like, hey, TJ, what do you think about this? You know, if, if it pertains to you, it's not just trying to let me get somebody else involved and make it more interesting. It just happens to work naturally yeah so, and it makes yeah. the video uh, 20 minutes when it could have been <laughs> 12. yeah and that helped my my video yesterday uh our video for tomorrow that's went pretty smooth i did it like in two and a half hours yeah and really happy with it even editing i was like whoo this is gonna save a lot of time <laughs> like rather than just recording and saying too much for no reason yeah um not for no reason but some things don't need to be shared or said not that it's bad yeah, and just it, content that isn't worth worth it. Well, people, you know, I I think of it as uh, I'm thinking about people's time that's watching the video, and you know, if I can get the same message across in 12 minutes versus 20 minutes, you know, I mean, that's eight minutes back of their life that they go and do something else. You know, they can go watch another video, or they can, you know, do, so I, I try to think about that. I ramble a lot. You you see me? I talk. I can talk forever. Yeah, and I do that. <laughs> I Two do hours, that with my, minutes. We could talk I, I, forever. I do that with my videos, and I realize I'm like, this video is supposed to be eight minutes long, and it's 25 minutes. So it's, uh, something's got. Something's got. No one's gonna watch a video for 25 minutes about me sitting here talking, you know. But that's why I try to edit it down and have the most crucial parts in there. Unless it's like a vlog, and then I'm just doing whatever, you know. TJ, do you use a production company too? I do not. Uh, I do it. I'm, production company. I, I am the production company. That's the the <laughs> fun part to me is making the videos. You know, shooting and and uh, you know, getting the shots and all that stuff is fine. But sitting here, actually, like making the video, doing the sound design. Y'all don't even like making sound design. That's like the hardest part. Like that video, that short y'all just watched. I mean all those little intricate sounds that you heard and you know, the one off little noises and stuff. I had to add all those sounds in, you know, and it's, that makes it like more immersive when you're watching the videos, when you hear all these little sounds that you don't think about, but those sounds aren't naturally there because most of the time when somebody's filming something, they're filming with the mic and all you hear is the person talking. You don't hear the car pulling up and the door shutting and all that, you know, all those extra things, those are added, added in like afterwards. But I enjoy That's the part that I enjoy is actually putting the video together and the sound design and, and the feeling behind what I'm trying to put out. Um, I had to do one yesterday for work and uh, it's a guy that's a communication. He's the communication guy, but he's not really good at like making videos. But my boss, which is the site VP, he's like, see, I want you to make this video and I want you to, be, I want it to be like a, a documentary. I want it to be like great. And so I go through and I made this video last night to like 1230. Um, and I made it today in the, the, uh, the, the guy looked at it, the communications guy looked at it and his mouth was just like open. He was like, how did you make that? I was like, well, it was all your videos. I just cut them up differently and, and put some different music in and it looked like a movie, it looked like a documentary. I mean, but it was his videos. He just slap it together and, and it don't have no yeah. background music, no, the cuts are just blunt. There ain't no fading or not. You know, I'm like, those little details is what make the videos like really good. And it takes yeah. a little extra time, but I think people appreciate it, you know, more. Yeah. I've been getting, comments on them and it's only because i was using youtube like i use reselling for the equipment that i talked about that i was i bought that don't use i do i was like okay if i get monetized and if i get monetized let me see how much i make my first month and i i made 124 dollars, and that was more than what i thought i was gonna make yeah then the second month made a little more and then the third month which i just got paid yesterday for 
I made a, a lot a little bit more. Yeah. So it's like I've been using it now. It's like the website, you know, to have that pay for it and not be like, I got money in my pocket. I could go spend it. It's like, no, let me work towards it. So that's how I'm using all this stuff. There, there's, I didn't pay for itself. there's a lot of money to be made on. I always tell people like now is the best time to get into content creation because there's so much, so many different ways that you can make money. Like yesterday, you know, the 21st is the, that's the payday for, for everywhere. Like, uh, I don't know about TikTok because TikTok don't pay that much and I haven't been paid from TikTok yet, but Instagram, Facebook, all YouTube, they all pay on the same uh, day. Um, and then hmm. I forgot uh, Amazon affiliate links. So if you don't have those, you need to get those too. Uh, those come at the end of the month and all that together. Like last month for me was like over $2,000, <laughs> you know, and that's just a bunch of different things but all together, when it comes in at the same time, it's like great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's like my house payment, my car payment. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. You can actually tangibly pay for pay for things. And it's all about, you know, it's from me making a video uh, with my wind blowing machine with my Jerry Carroll. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I was like, man, I saw it on TikTok and then even loved it even more on, on Facebook, or not Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. I was like, man, like I cannot. Stop watching this. It, it's it's so stupid, but you know, I mean, it's uh, it, 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 that's just what that's uh, what I love doing. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, the facial yes, expressions too with the Jerry curl. I'm just like, <laughs> man, he hasn't <laughs> even saying nothing. <laughs> like it's it's they epic love, already. Then people they love that video. They just it's relatable to them, so they they love it. Uh, yes, this question right here. Well, I 100% have a job like I work. I, my job is literally an hour and five minutes away. So I have to drive this two two hours worth of driving. So like today, last night I, I worked. Um, I work from home sometime, but like the last couple of weeks, I've had to go in every single day. So like last night I worked until my boss called me at eight o'clock and had a project that I need to do in the morning. And uh, so I worked on that project all the way to 1230 last night. I went to sleep at probably one. I had to be at the site at six, which means I had to leave my house at like 445. And uh, and I didn't leave there today until like almost six o'clock. So I didn't get here to like seven, you know, so it's been, <laughs> like a, been a long, long day. It's been actually a pretty long week, but it's hard when you have a full time job and you go and you and you know, I'm working 40 hours a week, but 40 hours a week plus I'm doing two hours of driving a day. You know, we're talking about 50 hours of just work stuff. So I, I, squeezing, doing extra stuff in that time is hard, you know, but I, I, I manage, I manage doing it. Zika said you make them tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, speaking of tired, I'm not tired, but he is a busy man. And uh, what, 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 uh, Want to do an outro for yourself? Tell people oh. about you once again. Yeah. So you know, if if you want to check me out, I'm I'm TJ Love Lady everywhere, um, and then I'm also uh, Palette Jacking, P A L L E T Jacking, no G at the end. And uh, I have it in the description, folks. D, okay. Yeah. So you know, my my biggest thing is is I try to entertain people and I also try to give people value. So you know. I'm an open, open book. So if you have any questions, I'm on Instagram as well. Um, you, you can follow me on Instagram or any social media, you know, shoot me a message. I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Um, I'm not a, any kind of guru or anything like that. I'm just going off of life experience and, and what I've experienced and what I've, you know, seen other people experience and stuff like that. But I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I try to tell people the most, uh, the most true thing that I know. <laughs> so like i said if you got any questions you know hit me up um you know if you you check me out you know check out my content you know you may like it you may not uh but i appreciate you know any kind of love and support that i get yeah and go go leave some comments on that video on youtube on his ch channel that little uh, short movie we saw it's pretty epic i hope to see more I'm, I'm, like I'm, that. I'm gonna make more i you know i got this love hate relationship with youtube now but I, you know i I know that it's it's in my long term plan to continue to create, and I know that if I stop making videos on YouTube, I will have a big void in my life, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I enjoy I enjoy doing it, you know, whether or not the algorithm and all that kind of stuff is just stuff, you know what I mean? So I, I'll always create. 
Um, but I, I, I really want to get back into it. And, uh, and cause I used to, I mean, I, I've always worked, I've worked for my whole life and, and I, I worked an hour away for, I've worked at that place for 11 years. So all this time I've been on YouTube, I've been working up there. So it's not, you know, I come home at six o'clock, I can edit a video for two, three hours and have a couple hours to watch my, my YouTube videos of other people. And then I can go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, make sure to do check out TJ and also enjoy his content. His shorts are freaking amazing. The characters that he um, portrays and shares with us is just fun and super entertaining. But he does have informative information about content and what YouTube shares. And I think that's really good because something about wanting to learn about YouTube, I wasn't into at first. Like I should follow the YouTube creator channel. But I don't. I'd rather go watch somebody else who's talking about it. But now I do both. Yeah. But TJ is, is uh, pretty on it when it comes to the information and shares his experience and also what works for him, what goes on. And it's just all around um, really good of what he does. And I enjoy it. And I hope you all enjoy him enough to go check him out and give him a chance to get your support. So, ladies and gents, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. If you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. And stay tuned for more. I'll have TJ on again sometime, maybe even yeah, as a of course. And, yeah. Yeah. And I have you, I, I want to have you on the channel as well. When, when we do lives, we do lives and we talk and me and April. I don't know if you have you ever met April before. No. Okay. Yeah. You have to meet April. Um, we, we get giddy when we're together. We're in here talking and laughing and <laughs> having a good old time. So yeah, I'm down. I'm yeah, I appreciate down. I appreciate you having me on. You're welcome. All right, folks. Y'all take it easy. Have a good one.